Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Muckluck Streams. I'm your charming self-proclaimed yet still humble host, Muckluck, and today we are back in the wonderful world of Guild Wars 2, which is Tyria, by the way. Did you know that? Hello there. I am pretty sure I'm on the EU servers. Let me double check here. Yes, we are in apparently Gunner's Hold in Europe. So, hello to the Europeans. Now, we are going to uh, chill, relax, enjoy some Guild Wars 2 gaming, do some stuff with you guys if you're interested. Just try to have a good time. Until tomorrow, when I have to get a root canal. <laughs> yeah, I found out uh, yesterday that I apparently have uh, one tooth. One single tooth that's up to no good. And it's not visible at all. But they, they, did, a, they did a routine x-ray, and they, uh, they're like, yeah, on the inside, you're all f***ed up. And I'm like, what? Are you, sh are you sure that's mine? And they're like, yeah. So, is it tomorrow Wednesday? Uh, is tomorrow Wednesday? Oh yeah, Thursday. I don't know. I, I, I've got an appointment. I have an appointment. But yeah, I have to get a root canal. Also, my fridge is acting up. Yo, this is going to be an expensive month for me if I have to replace my freaking fridge. We've had that fridge like five years. Ah, oh, Muck reminding me better than my calendar. It's Tuesday. I am very reliable. I am very reliable. Okay, let's see. I already done the daily routine because I played this last night. Uh, let me see if I've already got my ASS from uh, Arborstone. My YouTube chat. Hi, Bobby. All right, let's see. This is a place of refuge. Not a den of iniquity. Hey, I haven't gotten it yet. All right. Is your fridge running? Better go catch it. My fridge is acting up. That's what it's doing. Let's open these. A few more of those. Uh, Alright. Hey, hey, Nobby, how you doing? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Fridge needs military school then. <laughs> Just gets it like we order we order a repairman to come uh, take a look at it. He just comes and screams at it for a while, and it works until he leaves. Something like that. Just trying to get all the relics together in one place. Not ignoring you by not saying hi to you, but nowadays I say I will catch out of the Twitch side of the stream. That's fine. You do you. That's okay. It might be time to process the luck. I have a lot of that. Or at least it's spilling over into my, like, bag slots and stuff a lot. You know, I had another... It was just a meme video that was going to go live today on the YouTube channel. And I actually was like, you know what? I'm going to wait another day because the video from yesterday still has a lot of momentum. Like... The video from yesterday is doing better than, like, any video I've uploaded in the last month, so I don't want to upload another video, which can sometimes mess that up. Uh, let's see, milling stone. We got some things that we need to sell some stacks of. Take away your fridge's Xbox and phone privileges. <laughs> Take away its doom. I've yeah, been playing doom on the fridge. Uh, let's see, seasoned wood planks. What's your favorite meta event in all of Guild Wars 2? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite. I, uh, Auric Basin comes to mind, because there's like 30 treasure chests there. That's always fun, opening all those up. The music in Dragon Stand is awesome. I love that one just because uh, it's a jam. I have a lot of fun there. Also, there's a good amount of treasure in that one. Let's see, Eatrite. Let's go over to a merchant. It's a gold 60 each. Okay. Um, would you be able to confirm that Teleporting Lion's Arch unlocks the first waypoint to Skywatch Archipelago and characters have never been there? Or did I somehow cheat in my game? Teleporting the Lion's Arch unlocks the waypoint to Skywatch Archipelago and characters that have never been there. 
if so, I haven't heard of that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I've got a um, Wizard Tower teleportation scroll for my alts. The Cody Modi. Hey, bestie. Hey, Shy. Thank you. You've contributed to the charity that is my face. <laughs> Referring to the root canal. Ah, uh, appreciate that. Muckla Douglas, my thought of the original, that's why the fourth. This is Johnson Van Sevens, the third, because you shy back to the lab. But enjoy your steam entertainment's on the way. Crank up the speakers, don't touch the speakers, give away every week. Please take a seat, but you'll only need the edge. Mmm. Oh, Elder Wood Logs. I gotta clear those, too. Root canal, oof. Yup. Pretty soon I'm gonna have a face full of cotton. <laughs> Just trying to talk fast around the cotton. Alright, let me process the luck, because it's like filling my bank right now. Uh, my necro can do that. Welcome to Heisen's video. Woo! It's crazy how much more expensive it is in the US and Canada. It's about uh, 1,000 to 1,500 max without insurance. Uh, root canal? Yeah. Well, more than that, because I've got to get a, uh, crown also. It is going to be very costly. Uh, let's see. Miss Lock. Need to, need some alt characters to park IRL, increase my IRL income. You open a chest to open a box to open a bag of trash. That's okay, it's Guild Wars 2. The merchants will buy trash. They love to recycle. Let's see, where is the artificing? So we're gonna go here and search luck and just combine all of this so it takes up way less space. The portal in Lion's Arch does work for pre-level 80 if you want to put an alt somewhere for chess, according to Frank on YouTube. What does the luck thing do for you? Uh, well, my magic find is max, so if I consume the luck for magic find, it will no longer do anything for my account. So, I save it, however... If uh, you want it to take up way less space, you can have an artificer combine all the little 10 lux into these uh, 200 lux. So that it takes less space. Any artificer, even if they're level 1, can do this. I should be consuming Yeah, if your magic find's not max, just, just consume it. This is just something I'm doing, because mine, uh, mine was already capped out. There's a merchant on Lunar New Year that will take luck and trade for red envelopes, which is basically money. So I can essentially turn the luck into a little bit of money every Lunar New Year. It's not much, but it's something to do with it. Let's go for the new legend. Yeah, there are some legendaries and a few guild hall upgrades that uh, y uh, that require the luck, so it's useful there too. Exoria says, I always keep one stack to craft Orion Legends to sell them. Yeah, I never know when I'm going to need, like, one obscure stack, so I always I always keep some. Don't know when it's going to become useful. I didn't know there was a max for magic find. How much is it? Uh, if you hit H and go to achievements, it's down here in the bottom right. Uh, it'll say from luck. The from luck, the most you can get is 300. So you can you can go above that by stacking it with other things, but from luck, the max is 300. This feels like ASMR for Guild Wars 2 poor people. This isn't even money making. <laughs> Just listening to the clink of coins. This is just luck squishing. ASMR for poor people. <laughs> I 
Uh, Waka says, I played the last episode available in the story yesterday, and I don't know if it's just me or not, but I find the story not engaging. Would you feel the same? Uh, the Soto story? I liked the Soto story. Like, the Soto story was, uh, the, the whole, like, wizard thing? I liked it. I mean, it's not, like, the best story I've ever read or anything. I wouldn't give it an Academy Award, but I enjoyed it. Hey, you're one of my top streamers this year. Hello, Highbreaker. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Uh, Rusky says, I have around 280k exotic luck waiting to be consumed on Lunar, taking so much space. Yeah, it's like, if I... Hold on. Oh, I can't access my bank. Can I open my bank in another window? So I've got all of these stacks of luck that's been squished together, and then I'm cleaning this up right now. One of my was my top uh, watch by factor of 10 plus. Thank you, Mr. Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Atomic Ant. You have good taste. Party potato? Yeah, I could do that. <sighs> have you tried percussive maintenance on your fridge that's acting up? No, I have not tried hitting the fridge. Don't honestly know if that's going to help. Uh, Alright, so this is now turning the 100s into 200s. This is the last of it. Uh, do you think Necro is a carrier in PvP? It can. I mean, Guild Wars 2 PvP is not League of Legends. You can have a team... That's like, you know, winning every team fight, but they lose the game because they're not getting objectives. So you, you can have the team with almost no kills beat the team with 50 kills. Uh, now, can a Necro be the scariest guy on a team? Yeah, absolutely. Any class can be the scariest guy. Uh, I, I have seen that before. So if you're if you're wanting to be just like the you know number one assassin. I mean, yeah, a Necro can uh, absolutely delete people if they know what they're doing. You can refine luck. Yep, a level 1 Artificer can do this. I'm turning... Uh, I turned a whole bunch of uh, 10 Lux into 50 Lux, and a whole bunch of 50 into 100, and now a whole bunch of 100s into 200s to make it take less space. And there. All right, so, bank. And now all those empty spaces, I think, is where luck was. It was all over the place. Up there. All right. There we go. That's looking a bit better. Uh, did I have more? I had, I had one. Are they cry? Uh, what to do with them? Here's two version of defragging. <laughs> Similar. Okay. All right. I think I'm done on this turn. Which role do you think is the best for carrying? Roamer? Question mark. Yes. Yeah, usually the one roaming around, because then they can choose, uh, like, if they're knowledgeable, they can choose, like, do I go home node and try to help there? Do I go mid? Do I go far? Do I go for the enemy, the objective? Uh, you know, they a good roamer that can identify where the highest chance of a kill is on the map is uh, probably the closest thing to a hard carry. Uh, okay. Let's see. What? Oh, I just realized Blitch Hut isn't on. Hang on just a second. One of my mods isn't working. Oh, I mean, it's not broken or anything. It just didn't start with the game. Let's see. Blish. And... Yes. Okay, should be booting up now. 
90k HP. Do you have J-Corp? I have J-Corp. Uh, I think I'm in giver's gear right now. Let me see. Yeah, Jade Core, tier 10. Highest level 1. If I unequip that, I go down to 16k. But right this second, I think uh, I'm in giver's gear. So I've got uh, 2,381 toughness. So actually very tough to kill right now in terms of PvE stuff. And Bloodshot is acting up. Uh, I might have to control alt delete it and then reopen it again. Let's see. End process. All right, done. And try this again. Thought Ranger had more HP than NG. I got the same amount of HP on Zerker or J Jade Core. I'm not sure how their base HP. Like, I know Necro has some of the highest base HP in the game. And I know Guardian has some of the lowest. The other classes, I don't know that much. There we go. There's my add-ons. Uh, okay, what's going on right now? Drakkar. Drakkar is fun. Let me see if anyone's doing that right now. Go down to the world map view. Let's see. Group Finder, LFG, Icebird Saga, Biora, Drakkar. Join group. How do you switch to Tyria map from Mistlock? Uh, in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, there's an elevation thing. You can click on that. Or, um, what is it? Sh uh, shift mouse wheel up or down will change the elevation you're looking at. Oh, they just said thank you. I think they just finished fighting it. Ah, uh, bummer. All right. Have you seen Teapot tweet about Guild Wars 2? Mm, no. Is it recent? Let's see. Mm. Uh, what did he say? Not feeling a lot of motivation to stream Guild Wars 2 right now at all. I don't think there's anything interesting to do or say currently. I'll be back when I've got uh, when I've got some good ideas. Um, that's fair. You gotta keep it. That's completely fair. He's been streaming and making content for Guild Wars 2 for ten years. That's very insane. That's longer than most streamers' careers on any game. Uh, and I gotta say, there's only a few games in my entire life that I have played where I didn't get bored before 10 years. Like, are me crazy. I think that's completely valid, you know? And it probably sucks, because of course, like, for, for him, he gets the most, just like I do, uh, he and I both get the most viewers when we play Guild Wars 2, so he's like knowing that he's giving up playing the thing that gets him the most, you know, views, traffic, income, and but th that's how burned out he is. He was probably burned out for a while, but he was forcing himself to play it uh, for, you know, like, you know, the stream numbers and stuff like that. Uh, like, I know he's been playing World of Warcraft lately. I hope he's enjoying it. I, I, I truly do. I truly do. Is Winter's Date update in a few hours? Uh, yeah, I believe that comes out today. I think it does. So uh, see, Etherblade. Etherblade Assault could be fun. Uh, so yeah, I, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make fun of him or anything like that. I, I think that is a completely valid thing to be burned out on a game after, uh, after a decade of streaming it and stuff. I hope he finds uh, something else that uh, still makes him happy. And you know, anytime there's a new update, I'm sure he'll be back. If not before, then if he gets another idea. What overlay are you using? Uh, Blishud. Blizzard has a few cool features, like for example, this mount wheel, so I can access all my mounts with one button instead of nine different buttons. Uh, it has the event viewer here, so I can see what events are about to start without opening up a web browser. 
Uh, if you are interested in that, this is a link to a video I've got on how to set it up if you would like it. Uh, but Blizzard is basically a library that has over 50 different add-ons in it, and with just one click you can enable or disable any of them. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's also the new updates don't add that many hours for us to sync in if we're caught up. Yeah. Like the, uh, what, the, the Soto story? Like the Soto story, I finished in like a day. And after that, there was the two new strike missions, which were cool. I really liked the Temple of Phoebe one. And then there was, uh, the Convergences thing that was added later on. Which again, I enjoyed. I've been running a lot of Convergences lately. Um, however, in terms of, you know, keep in mind, he, he's got groups of people that are doing like Harvest Temple Challenge mode. I mean, he wants... I, I would guess he wants something tougher to, like, sink his time into. We should tell him about Stranded Alien Dawn. If he's seen my videos, he knows. I don't know if he if he likes that kind of thing. I th That's not to say that he would hate it, but I've just never seen him show interest in, like, a tactical strategy game like that. Uh, other than, like, like more fast-paced, pa fast um, like, tough boss fights. That seems to be his thing for me looking at him. But the music, the music is good, yes. Uh, let me see, let me think. Hide you sure will be safe under my watch. Whale hunting, that's no good. Then tail them. Lead us to where they're stashing our stuff. Much like grub extraction. You're not finished until you remove the nest. He plays StarCraft. Everyone, let's move. Right, uh, let me rephrase that. I've never seen him get really into turn-based tactical games, which is what, uh... Stranded is sometimes when you're pausing it a lot. StarCraft is very much a fast-paced one. Alright, let me see. Just check in some different zones that are doing metas I like to see. If there's any of them doing something I want to join. Meta South. Dragonstan. Um, 27k viewers under 24 hours gold video doing well. Yeah, Rusky. Best video uh, for, for, like, how many views it got in the first 24 hours? 27K is insane. That's uh, the most successful video I've posted in um, probably, like, a month as far as, like, day one. It's almost like a lot of people like gold. Hopefully it helps someone out, though. Mm. Teapot has a strong presence as an entertainer, though you might take a hit not streaming Guild Wars 2, still be okay streaming. That's very true for you, too. Yeah, I, I've ex I experienced that myself. Like, I, after I was, you know, granted, he, ta he takes days off, and I don't. Uh, after, I don't know, three or four years of streaming Guild Wars 2 every single day, I got really burned out, and that's when I started doing variety stuff. And although I still, even after a year of doing variety, get less viewers when I do that, uh, it, it is, it's made me so much happier. It's made me so much happier. Like, discovering and playing games like Rift Breaker, Stranded Alien Dawn, Grim Dawn, uh, we did, like, Warhammer. I, I've played, like, six Warhammer games this year. Like, that's that's been an absolute joy. Yeah, it's been great. How do you get the neat sky scale skin? Uh, the cryptus sky scale skin. Uh, do I have a, a link for that? Hang on. I have a guide on how to get it. I don't know if I have a command for the guide. Give me just a second. I can pull up that video and link it to you. Here it is. Cryptus sky scale skin guide. That is uh, the guide to make getting the Cryptus skin if you want it. It is a project. It does take a little bit of effort, but if you want it, it's kind of just like a show-off thing. Fantastic. Hey, Mike. Hi, Heisen. I'm sure a white like your student 2024 video would do well. Very simple concept. One people uh, want to know or hear about. Uh, yeah. There's a, there's a running joke on the internet that MMO uh, content creators like me will make a Y play, blah, 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 you know, video every single year. And I have made two of them. I could absolutely make another. I'm not sure if I have much to add, though. 
Like, there, there was a Why Play Guild Wars 2 in 2021 video, I think, was the last one I made. Which is one of the, one of, if not the top video on my entire YouTube channel. And it did really well, but like the reasons I listed for loving this game have not changed. So I'm not sure if I would change anything in the video other than like the number. Talked about the combat system, how good the different mounts are, things like that. Just waiting for them to finish that. Hi. Hi, Frank. Uh, Nico says, any idea on the release date for the weapon proficiency patch? I think we've probably got over two months. I, I, I think it's... Uh, it was the second or the third major update of Soto was going to have that. Heisen said two and a half months for weapons. Do the same video, but talk about fishing for 20 minutes? Oh my god. Uh, to be fair, a lot of people are quitting Guild Wars 2 since Soto launched. A lot of my friends, including my wife, lost interest in Guild Wars 2 for various reasons. Um... I haven't seen any stats that show that, like, we lost a ton of people or anything. But if people need a break, that's totally fair. Again, I think it's rare that anybody likes the same game forever. Like, I think people that can just play the same title, like, you know, just play RuneScape for the rest of their life or whatever, those are uh, hard to find. Honestly, after I stopped playing WoW, I was surprised I was able to get into another MMO as much as I got into Guild Wars 2. Just because, like, I had already played MMOs almost 20 years at that point. I didn't think another would pull me in this much. Uh, I would love to see you playing FF14. I tried it once. Now, granted, FF14 is a huge game, right? So there's absolutely... It would absolutely be fair to say I didn't try the good bit, no matter what I tried. Uh, I played FF14 for about 10 hours, I think. And a lot of people are like, oh, skip the first part. I'm like, I don't want to skip parts. If I'm going to get into the game, I want to see the whole story from the beginning. And there, I, I don't remember the name of the expansions. They were like, no, 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 yeah, don't play Prophecies. Play Heaven's Dagger. This is your monthly reminder Shadow that you won't touch the beakers if you use a straw. Happy 28 months, Muck. And I was just like, no, I don't want to skip anything. So I played the first bit for like 10 hours. And it felt like playing WoW when WoW first came out. Like... I had to hold still to cast spells, I had to watch my mana bar, and then I'd be like, cast, 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 bolt. Cast, 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 bolt. Cast, that was combat. Dude, I felt like I'd gone back in time two decades. It was, mm, I couldn't get into it. That was FF, that was 10 hours of FF14. That was, uh, that was when I tried FF14. Uh, So, I, I have heard, even from people that play FF14 as their main thing, they're like, oh yeah, the beginning sucks, it gets better later. But, uh, I played the first 10 hours and then I, I left. Uh, Heisen says, Muck, have you done the Ritualist event in Dragon's End maps? The dialogue between the two NPCs is funny to listen. The Ritualist event? It doesn't ring a bell. I haven't been to Dragon's End in a long time. Forget, I've gotten DMCA too many times there. <laughs> Muck with his delusional takes again. Oh my god. Don't push me. I'll make a guide on why Guardians or, uh, or Firebrands play better when they're not providing quickness. I'll take down this whole player base. By the way, I, I've decided to just embrace it. I, there's There are some folks on the Snowcrows Discord that anytime I make any video, they rip me apart. 
Oh, that guy? That's the guy that did the lingering light build. Oh, that's the guy that thinks he has to use Jungle Stalker to keep Mida. Oh, that's the guy that thinks... Da, da, da. You know, I'm, ju I'm just gonna embrace it. I'm gonna ha Dude, I swear, they pushed me enough. I'm gonna make a video that's like, how to properly heal on Druid. And it's gonna be one pet, uh, lingering light, so no alacrity, and it's gonna be like full signets. And you, you, you just uh, spam healing spring. That's how you keep the, the heal on people. And then just talk about how powerful it is. We'll use like Relic of Duena to increase the healing spring regen by 20%. And I'll, I'll talk about how that's so strong, you don't need anything else. I just, I just make a whole series of guides just to, just to ruin, ruin everything. Just because snow crows push me. <laughs> Uh, high end FF14 is still a lot of fun. No excuse for having to go through a pile of crap to get to it, though. Yeah, that, that's what I've heard from a lot of FF14 players. Um, because, like, I used to talk with Xandri a lot, and Xandri, uh, was a Guild Wars 2 player that came from FF14. And she was, she was always like, yeah, the ending is so good. I'm like, yeah, but, uh, you know, I was playing this, this bit. She's like, oh, yeah, that sucks. Keep it up and we should have enough. Michael changed the meta. Michael ruined the meta. I think SC don't mean it. They also have the same instinct to me, even though it's about open world, not raids. So as far as I know, I just want something to flame out since they're bored. Ah, uh, possible. I'm the same. Just finished up the last raid tier. High-end raids are amazing. Great design. Jobs have great identities. Fun mechanics. Level 90. Uh, it's all relative. FF14 has amazing stories, basically amazing in MMO terms. Your average single-player RPG story beats anything I saw up to the second expansion. Uh, I think I would describe all cool cool stuff from each MMO make my own mega Another MMO. Careful. Amazon proved it's easier to go to space than it is to make a good MMO that people like. <laughs> Another pet rescue. Keep it up and we should have enough. You lost me there. Amazon made New World, which crashed and burned at launch. It's a little better now. And they also sent Bezos to space. And they had an easier time sending Bezos to space than they did getting people to like New World. That was the joke. I'm currently trying WoW on Demon Hunter to not feel fully stale. Being used to Guild Wars 2 comment on Scrap or Willbender. Kind of scared WoW rating will ruin Guild Wars 2 rating by showing how easy it actually is by comparatively. Uh, okay, so as someone... Now, not in recent expansions. But as someone who... In many expansions of WoW did Mythic rating. And I led... What, what, was, my, what was my top achievement? I think 50th group in the United States to beat uh, some raid bosses in Cataclysm. We got world first on a few mythic fights in uh, Cata. Um, we, oh no, wait, no, mythic wasn't a thing in Cata. It was, uh, her heroic was mythic then. Then they made heroic e easier later on and, and called, uh, and then made mythic. Um, in any case, I would say that the mythic fights in World of Warcraft are equitable to the things like, so, uh, Harvest Temple challenge mode in this game. Now, there are some easy mythic fights in WoW, but most of them are insane. And most of them are like, you know, 10 minutes of fighting, and if one person makes one mistake, everybody dies. That's an average mythic in World of Warcraft. Now, I would say most of the raid bosses in Guild Wars 2 are between the normal of WoW and the heroic of WoW. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, the mythic fights in WoW, a very small percentage of the player base we're seeing, kind of like the challenge modes in this game. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very, very intense. And you, you, got, you gotta know... 
I don't know what the number is. For a while it was 10, for a while it was 20, for a while it was 25. You need a full group of people that know what's up to do those. Okay, chat, I'd meet you Monday ago. Hey, Jackals. Ran a bit late. We ended up doing Rift Breaker all the way to midnight. <laughs> Who won your chat? Uh, I died like 11 times, so there was quite a few reloads, but I did get, uh, I did get a win at the end. We played the map with the snails. So I, I died to snails a lot. Uh, I stopped having a sub in WoW because playing a sub just to play with my overweight male Kul'Tiran doing old content for Transmog wasn't worth it anymore. Yeah, when about the time that I felt like I was done playing WoW, I was like, cont I continued to play WoW for many, many months just because my raid group needed me. Because again, I was with a, a t like a team of very good gamers that I enjoyed playing with, so I was definitely playing for the people and not for the game for like a few more months before I finally had to stop. And when I stopped, it was because I was like, "Hey guys, my wife is about to uh, she she's due soon. I'm gonna be a dad. I gotta stop." <laughs> so I know when I last did hardcore rating in WoW because it's it's my son's age time ago. Because at that time, I was basically raiding 16 to 20 hours per week. It was like a part-time job. I loved it at the time, but I just... It's too much time. Hey guys, want to ask this? Is Soto main quest only have thirteen chapters? Hmm. Thirteen, and then a prologue called Uncertain Times. time to get all the AP what you can replay story chapters so sin if you if you missed an achievement point from something you can click on a chapter and hit replay you don't have to do the whole thing over I forgot you do you EW or you go or two on Tuesday was hoping for 40k fix yeah I am eager to get back into 40k I'll be back on it tomorrow not yet get a beetle close to one of the nodules Unfortunately, my mouth apparently being messed up has uh, thrown a wrench in the morning streams. I had to go to a uh, dentist on Monday and then found out I need a root canal, and that's going to be on Thursday. So that's going to mess with the morning streams on two days. Minimum. Hello, aside from the Winter's Day Gobbler and Home Node present thing, anything else to keep an eye on during the event? That's the main thing. Uh, getting those is the main, is my top recommendation. Because, like, for example, the Star of Gratitude that eats Imperial Fragments, I use this every day year-round, and you can only get it during December. So, definitely make sure you get that if you're interested. And that, uh, also gets you the Christmas tree in your home instance. 
Uh, Silverio says, if Guild Wars 2 disappeared tomorrow, what game would you like to play? I mean, I play a lot of other games. Um, in fact, lately I've been playing Guild Wars 2, you know, dedicated, just like one day a week. Um, uh, what am I really into right now? We've, we've been playing a lot of Riftbreaker. Uh, yeah, hold on a sec. Pictures a thousand words and all that. Alright, so recently, we played Riftbreaker, been playing Path of Exile's New League, Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, freaking adore this. Uh, looking forward to getting back into it. We just finished a playthrough of Age of Wonders 4, uh, dabbling on Grim Dawn, uh, played Dead Cells, Vermintide with Loranity, Noxie, and Shypash. We just finished Psychonauts 2, we just finished Dungeons 4, uh, we just finished Stranded Alien Dawn, we just finished Warhammer Realms of Ruin. Like, I've been playing a lot of different games. If Guild Wars 2 vanished off the face of the Earth for some weird reason tomorrow, I got other stuff to play. Um, that would be really bad for business for me, because I've got 160 guide videos for Guild Wars 2 that people watch each day, which helps me, uh, you know, keep my lights on. But, I'd be alright. Any chance you play Baldur's Gate 3? I have. I've, d I, I've gotten 200 hours. I have an, a good playthrough that's about 100 hours long, and I have an evil playthrough that's about 100 hours long. If you'd like to watch them, they are both on my second YouTube channel that you can find right there. I just linked in the chat. Uh, however, my favorite part... Show him the boom? I was. I was going to. Hold on. So, yeah, have, you, have you all heard of the term barrel mancy? Basically winning fights by throwing explosive barrels into them. Uh, I... Basically, when I was playing uh, my evil playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3, I would take all the bombs I'd found and throw them at the enemy and blow them up and then reload the game, do the f fight normally, and then pick up any more explosives I found and keep doing that. So my collection of explosives was getting bigger as the game progressed. And I ended up uh, making, with uh, Noxie's help here, this wonderful, wonderful video. Those are the barrels. So yeah, have I played Baldur's Gate 3? Yo, I blew up Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> goes on for three and a half minutes. I'll link it in the chat if you want to see it, but yeah, we had an absolute blast in that. You can see the splash damage hitting your PC. Dude, I, I, want, I want to stress again that as the game progressed, I kept picking up more bombs. So when I hit the final boss, I threw down like hundreds of explosives and it lagged really, really, really bad. We did one shot the final boss though. Uh, interested in honor mode. At some point, yeah, so I just did two playthroughs of Baldur's Gate 3. Awesome game. I'm not ready to play it again right now. I just did 200 hours of it. Now, honor mode, I beat Divinity Original Sin 2 on honor mode. Uh, honor mode is basically you have one save file, and if anyone dies, it saves over that save file. So if you start to lose a fight, you can reload to before that fight. But, if you have already got someone down, you can't reload to before that moment. You have to- you have to get out of that situation on your own at that point. Um... So, could I do it on honor mode? Yeah, I'm sure I could. I- I, I beat Divinity Original Sin 2 on honor mode. 
Uh, but it would take time, and I just don't want to do a third playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3 right now. Now, you do have to know about certain cheesy things before you do honor mode. Uh, example, the moment where, like, you insult the, um, Gith Yankee Queen, and she just, like, snaps her fingers and you die. Like, your whole party dies, it's just game over. Like, if you don't know about that, you could lose your whole honor mode right there. Like, you have to already kind of know what's going to happen before you do it. Will PvE be easier than raids for Legi Armor? Depends on your definition of easier. In terms of time, no, it will take way more time. In terms of social anxiety, well, you don't have to talk to other people while you do it, so there's that. So some people would say it's easier because they can get it on their own. But on the flip side, if you do it from raids, you can get it in way less time spent. But you need a group of people to do it. Hey, Chad, is anyone playing Black Desert? I have not played Black Desert this year. I have played about a year of Black Desert in the past, but not recently. Uh, Mark Mark says, it's my first Winner's Day. Excited for Winner's Presence. How hard are the mini games? Uh, I've got a guide on the Winner's Day uh, basics, if you want to check that out. Uh, there's a link to it there. It's not... They're not that bad. There's a few of them that I am no good at. Like, I remember the... Uh, what was it? The, the bell one, where you basically, like, play music. <laughs> I tried it once, and I was like, I, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Jumping puzzle is tricky but easily repeatable. Yes, it is. Agreed. To be effective, we need to destroy the gate. Uh, hey, Mike, I'm a ranger main as well. What professions would you recommend for a change of pace? Something very or kind of different than ranger. Um, I mean, if you like ranger, like being a pet class, then engineer mechanist is certainly similar to that. But it depends on, you know, what you really, what you, what you want. But I mean. Fun is subjective. So, like, I could say, like, oh, I like NG because it's very similar to Ranger. You might be, like, someone else might be like, oh, I like playing my Thief because it's completely different from my Ranger and it's a nice change of pace. It, it depends on you more than me. You want to fight? Let's go! Morning, Mock. Happy Wednesday, you chat. Thank you, Master Lee. Uh, Bell is easy, like playing a keyboard. Hey, guess what I haven't done? <laughs> I have a custom set of keybinds and settings called Bell Choir just to be able to do that activity. I did not set up custom settings. I just walked in with my normal settings and did very poorly. Good years of uh, from the er, say I have such good memories from the early years of the bell activity on Winter's Day. People cheer, talking to each other, sending meals with President Grats says the perfect score was so nice. Man, playing that bell, playing those bells took 100% of my concentration. I had no concentration left to be talking to people.
Lopo says, I always have such good memories of Winter's Day selling orphans for karma. <laughs> Yeah, it's always funny telling people about the orphan farm that don't know about the orphan farm and watching their eyes get a little wider. Uh, I'm also religiously rewatching a new vid in the hopes uh, gold falls into my laps. I'm like, here's how to get rich in 12 minutes. They're like, but how do I get rich in zero minutes? <laughs> Like I was setting up a PC build and took some inspiration from your setup. I just want to let you know and say thank you, thank you. I hope it works out for you. I keep watching Heisen's last video from the Guardian Pistol 5 about converging. <laughs> converging? Mugga chat, what are your thoughts of having a Hardcore Gears 2 instance like WoW did? When you say a Hardcore instance, do you mean like a, a server where if you die your character is deleted? Is that what you mean? Dude, number one death would be vistas. People trying to jump to get to a vistas and falling. Winner's Day go live yet. Uh, did Winner's Day go live yet? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's like an hour. Permadeath, yes. Gotcha. Uh, I don't know. I fear if Guild Wars 2 did it, they'd just be called a copycat at this point, but at the same hey, time... finally subbed for 12 months. At the same time, you know, WoW copied our sky scales, so why not? I once did a self-imposed challenge like that. I had a character called Muckluck Zero Deaths, and I did get to level 80 on it. It honestly wasn't difficult because I just avoided incredibly dangerous areas. Think would have extreme hardcore if you die, your account gets perma and game automatically uninstalls. No, uh, hardcoreist, where uh, if you die, there's like a knock on your door. <laughs> Just Bram shows up and just kills you IRL. The thickest nope rope in all Ateria. Boop! Wow, that's a lot of dead people.
Throwback to the time I tried to tell people respect the boop and I made a typo and I screamed respect the boob in the map chat. Got a lot of messages about that. Wow, I just dodged two of them. <laughs> oh my god. Those flowers are disrupting the lay energy. Destroy them. Uh, Celine says, if I buy Standard Edition Soto now, is there a way to upgrade to Ultimate Edition later? Um... I mean, Ultimate Edition is just the same as Deluxe, but it comes with some gems, I think. Did they update this boss? Uh, no. He's still the same. I think the last time anything major that happened to change this boss fight is when they introduced the, uh, way station table. Muck, how do you get so much karma from your eternal ice addiction? Doing random stuff. I've literally not had to think about karma. It just appears. I will say, if you're specifically trying to get karma, there is an amulet enrichment that increases how much karma you get. And there's also a buff you can get from a guild hall that gives you, like, permanent increase to uh, karma gain. It's from the bartender. So, if you're really trying to get karma, I would do those two things. Hey, Mark, did you stream the last monthly AT, or do you know any streamings about it? Uh, I never really watched those. Uh, Mighty Teapot often does. You got something? What guild buffs are permanent? At the bartender in the guild hall, there is a list of buffs, and you can have any one of them permanently until you change it. My current one is 10% more magic find. Screaming, yeah. It's a spit. This fire is tearing apart the islands. Destroy them quickly. Oh man, he was three percent. That was so close to face. Glyph of the Starring right here. Hopefully they get off the fire this time. It's permanent, but one at a time? Yes. Exactly. peek out again. Killing them 
boardroom champion inside the monster's coils should drive it off that island. Don't let Steve Master Adrian shield the others. Starting to rescue that guy. I'm just gonna go for the stars now because I know people are gonna stand in it. And there they go. I think that was like eight reses. Man, considering we, uh, this is some rough RNG, because, like, we had him at 3%, and then he's done, like, four islands since then where we haven't gotten to hit him. Now we can finish it. Uh, Deference is what's the best profession for raid damage? Every single one of the uh, nine base classes has builds that do crazy damage in raids. All of them do. Uh, depending on what you want to play. Dodge those. Uh... However, if all you care about is, you know, number one, snowcrows.com has a benchmark section that's uh, basically a bunch of nerds that are trying to figure out which class can do the most DPS down to the single digits. You could check that to see if there's something there that catches your eye. But they're all pretty comparable. Got it. What's the plan, guy? Warren Roth burrowing his face around a tree before dying was weird the first time I saw it. What's the plan? Yeah, it didn't make any sense to me either. I thought he was just trying to get away for a bit. But then, so, like, supposedly in the story, when you're in the, the instance of uh, fighting Mordremoth's mind at the end of Heart of Thorns, uh, it's supposed to be that, like, you kill his mind right at that moment, and that's why he suddenly collapses on that spike. Which makes a little more sense. But yeah, if you just look at the meta as a standalone thing, it's kind of like, wait, what? Why did he do that? Muck, what's your Guild Wars 2 map meta tier list? Man, I'm just trying to have fun. I don't know. Um, I like Auric Basin because there's like 30 treasure chests at the end. Dragon Stand has awesome music, so I have fun here. Drizzlewood Coast is kind of fun. Hmm... Seitung is the only meta I really like in End of Dragons. I don't really like any of the Soto ones. Hmm. 
Those are the ones that jump to mind. Parathi Hinterlands push against centaurs. Crimson Spud, Moonlight Potato. <laughs> the only thing that remains from my time trying to play Sekiro is that voice line. You don't convergence today. Uh, I did one last night, but I could I could lead another one during the stream for sure. Tunnel gaming. Oh god, the tunnel. You know, I have not done the Giala Delve meta since the tunnel came out, and then I did the tunnel once. So the tunnel not only was the last time I did the first time I did tunnel was not only the last time I did tunnel, that was also the last time I did I did Giala. I hated the tunnel so much, I don't think I've been back to that zone. <laughs> Hey, my K chat. Hi, Zero. Mug, can you please provide detailed analysis on how you have fun? I, I I put the game in my eyes, and my brain says yes. Like that's that's basically it. It's my my brain makes the happy juice. Pet builds, support builds, green numbers, all those give me happy juice. Feeling like I save the day gives me happy juice. Like a well-timed glyph of the stars, things like that. Good story gives me happy juice. Tunnel gaming, no happy juice. <laughs> Trying to do achievements in Grim Dawn is a pain with how dead it gets. Grim Dawn. I'm just glad you have survived the crash. Eh. Yaladel. Oh. That makes more sense. Uh, is it worth trying to buy the bundle with the Living World Season newbie here? Hi, it's a. Uh, my answer to that is try the game because the game has a free a free download thing, right? You can try the game for free all the way to max level. One of the most generous free trials I've ever seen, and see if you like it. If you like the story. Living World is more story. It's really that simple. If you didn't like it for some reason, you probably could skip Living World. Now, it does, Living World does have some stuff outside of the story, but it's 90% story. Uh, like, Living World Season 4 does give you access to the Roller Beetle, which is another mount that you don't, cannot get in any other way. Um, but Season 1 and 2 is... Pretty much just story. Season 3 has a few new maps with some uh, merchants that have some useful stuff. But again, it's not required. So it kind of depends on you. But if you like Guild Wars 2, it is more Guild Wars 2. Good morning, Mug Mods Chat. Hi, Finn! Season 4 was the first time I actually started uh, enjoying the story. Uh, yeah. Season, yeah, Living World Season 4 with Joko and Krokotorik, that was uh, probably my favorite part of the story. It was really good. Season 3 maps were tidy. Yeah, there was a few things on, like, I remember in, um, was it Bloodstone having to, like, learn all those weird glider moves and, like, the torch stuff in Bitterfrost. Like, there was, like, all those different skills that the torches had, but you never use them because you just carry the torch to the next thing and put it down. <laughs> They did my boy Joko dirty. No, I think I think the Joko story was solid. Yeah. 
All right. One more section to loot. Uh, you want redeems? Hang on a second. I'll give you redeems. All right, done. Enjoy. I typed it wrong. No, you didn't, Lopo. It just wasn't on. Ah! Ah! I've been kidnapped! Santa Spud. There you go. Check mail. I logged in to send memes. <laughs> I said I turned redeems on. Hang on. Uh, more happy juice. Mug sees butter. Brain makes happy juice. <laughs> Isn't that you guys? Oh, hey, what's up? I think that's you guys. Tell me, Muck, can I safely go buy groceries without the fear of missing a giveaway on the current strain? Yes. Probably. The only way... Usually my giveaways are Tuesday during the evening stream. The exception to that is when you go buy groceries and I do the Chevalier's Not Here giveaway. <laughs> I mean, who knows? It could happen. Boop, boop. All right, got all the loot. <laughs> Dibs if he wins and he's not here. Oh yeah, calling Dibs. Ugh. Return to Guild War 2, should I be focused on obtaining Ascended Armor or something else? Hey, Tony. Uh, there... Yes, so as Jackals just linked in the chat, uh, if you're just returning to Guild Wars 2, I have a video that's called I just hit level 80, now what do I do, that you might appreciate, which is linked in the chat, and also one on how to gear up if you want it. Should I do Envoy Armor or Coalescence first? Uh, first 150 LIs. Um, so it depends. So Legendary Rings can only be gotten in two ways. Coalescence from Raids or Conflux from World View World. Uh, legendary armor can be obtained in many methods, but the raid legendary armor is the schmexy stuff. That's the stuff that like transforms and stuff when you go in combat. Like um, like my gloves right here. If I unsheath, you'll see they, they change. Those are the raid stuff. So you could preview the raid legy stuff and see if there's any of it that you think just looks especially awesome on your character and go for that first. Yeah, it, yes, Anet did say they would not do that again. They said it was too much of a pain. Is this the emote for- Oh, yes it is. Uh, end of an era. E3 is officially dead after more than two decades of hosting an event that has served as a central showcase to the U.S. and global video gaming industry. The Entertainment Software Association has decided to bring E3 to a close. Washington Post. Oh. I never went, so I'm part of the problem. <laughs> I always just, like, looked at Twitter the next day to see what happened to D3. I'm like, hi, Lord. How you doing? It died three times already. Oh, <laughs> did it? That's funny if so. Hey, 420 viewers. Nice. Uh, Let's see. What's next? Uh, someone asked about Convergence. Could do that. Uh, let's go to Wizard's Tower. I'll make a private one, because I want to set up groups before I go in there. The spicy flu gave E3 the stab. Yeah. I heard a lot of people the last TwitchCon uh, ended up getting a fresh bout of COVID, too. Jam a bunch of people in uh, one place. I mean, even if it's something simple like a cold, it's going to spread around. Something more serious than that. It's even worse. Uh, let's test the waters here. For anyone interested, I am willing to uh, pay for private convergence. I am on EU right now. Here is a squad join command. If anybody would like to get a convergence done, get that juicy loot, 
all those essences and stuff. And uh, what's the grand prize in there? There's a chance at the Supreme Runes of Holding. Go ahead and join up. I bet they all shared the same streamer bathwater on TwitchCon. That's how it's spread. <laughs> streamer bathwater. Is there a difference between private and public? Uh, the only difference is I can arrange the groups and do some organization before we go in there. And if I do a private one, I know that most of the people in the squad are listening to the stream. So if I shout something like, oh god, heal Zoja, she's about to die, people will probably do it. But in a public squad, there's no guarantee they're going to listen. Your server should have a public Discord server. I could find and join that to see what the groups uh, there you have going on. Uh, I mean, we do have a Discord that anyone can join if you want to join. Uh, after the poor woman breaking her name's spine, thanks to TwitchCon. The to be fair... To, ju just in the interest of, of fairness here, the whole breaking her, uh, the broke her back thing uh, that Jackals just mentioned was a booth at TwitchCon. Like, believe me, I will call Twitch out on their BS, but it wasn't Twitch who set that foam pit up that was like one foot of foam and then a concrete floor. It was, uh, it was like a company that made a booth there. They rented a booth there and they made the foam pit. I forget the name of it, but... I wouldn't say that that one was on Twitch. That was Twitch run. Uh, hold on. Lady breaks back at Twitch con foam pit. If I find it. Um. Let me see if there's info. Say any kind of connection. Lenovo. It was a booth by Lenovo. That was it. And she broke her back in two places and needed surgery to insert a metal rod into her back for support. For support. Another streamer named Locke Vanis dislocated her kneecap after a bad fall in the same pit. So they didn't even, like... Close the pit after the first person broke something. Uh, the lady went fi underwent five hours of surgery to get several spinal fusions. Bones were crushed and nerve damage to my blood. Okay, this gets pretty graphic going on. <laughs> but yeah, she uh, it was L Lenovo made a pit and then was encouraging people to jump in, and it was uh, like one foot deep and then a concrete floor underneath. Okay. If you provide alacrity, please drag yourself into an empty group. All right, so here's, we're gonna do that little bit of organization now so that everybody gets a whole lot more buffs. Hmm. Pugs never fail anyway. Um, I, I don't know. I just, this makes me more comfortable. Look, I mean, I'm paying, I'm paying the bill for the, the entry thing. All right, anyone who provides quickness, join one of the Alak people. Uh, also, I think I see a lot of you joining the public instance. You don't want to do that. I haven't opened the private one yet. I'll do it in just a second. So if you provide quickness, join one of the groups with an Alak person. So pair up. Is this EU? This is EU. Does Muck play NA2? Yes. But when I play at this time, I play on EU. All right. DPS, please fill in the remaining slots in the groups that have two people. Fill them up to five people. All right. I'm making a squad group. The private uh, convergence is opening. organization what's that it's the thing that uh people blame me for when uh my dragon's uh ends fail even if i'm not the one in charge all right if you're in group one drag yourself down into the other groups until they're full oh 
another slack and I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. So, quick assignment. Oh, hey. Uh, send it stuff. Thank you. Uh, quick assignments when we get started. Group 2 and 3 stay middle and protect Zoja. But group 3 is going to be handling the siege machines when they spawn. 4, 5, 6 will go to the bottom left and then do top left after. 7, 8, 9 will go to the bottom right and then do top right after. Okay. And I'll yell if anything unexpected happens. Uh, which classes have good DPS and hybrid builds for raids and strikes that are forgiving to play? What's the state of Guardian? Forgiving to play. Hmm. DPS and hybrid builds that are forgiving to play. Reaper? Reaper's DPS. Harbinger has a very easy hybrid build to play. Mechanist is very easy to play. There's a there's probably a low intensity DPS build for every class. Hybrid, there's certainly a few of them. Portal in as soon as we lost track of your astral fluctuation. I'll need to focus on maintaining our tether to Tyria. The nearest waypoint is a little out of range, so reviving... Any idea where one could find a low-intensity build for each class? Yeah, Zoja, shut up! Resurrection spells take a lot of magic. Oh, baby. <sighs> yes, we do have some guides. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Condi DPS mech was difficult to play. Condi DPS any engineer, if you're trying to play it to, you know, the peak, is challenging because you're juggling a lot of kits. You're like, you know, grenade kit, use some moves. Bomb kit, use some moves. Flamethrower kit, use some moves. Pistols, use some moves. Mortar kit, use some moves. And if you're Hollow Smith, Hollow Forge, use some moves. So you're juggling like six different weapons so yeah condi on ng if you're not being lazy with it can be arduous uh first siege machine is up if any you know there should be five of you there if there's not you know talk in party chat to get people's attention new siege machine should be spawning soon new siege machine is up who made the dancing muck? Rin the Yordle. On, uh, I commissioned Rin the Yordle on Twitter. She's actually made a lot of the uh, art for League of Legends. She's a uh, League of Legends and I think also an ArenaNet creative partner. Yeah, there's a, a lot of overlap between the skills needed to draw a Yordle and the skills needed to draw a Suras. So she's pretty good at both of those. Alright, champion spawning. Try to split up between the three of them. Reminder to try to save teammates. If they go down, they're gone for a while because there's no waypoint on this map. If you see a teammate go down, stay. Do what you can to save them. Asuras are ugly Yordles. I don't accept that feedback. 
If you say bald yordles, I'll feel that. I'll, I'll, I'll understand that. Because some of those yordles. Freaking hairballs. Jadebot waypoints work in that map. Do they work to revive you if you're dead, though, like a normal waypoint, Jackals? If so, I did not know that. Not that I've used my Jadebot waypoint in a very long time. One champion left. All right, it's time to split up. Reminders. Uh, group one, two, and three, stay middle. But group three, you're doing siege machines. Four, five, and six, go to the bottom left. Seven, eight, nine, go to the bottom right. If there's multiple targets, make sure you stay together as a group. Uh, hey, Muck, any advice for a new World Your Role player? Been trying to get you to battle, struggling a lot. Uh, M General, if you do exclamation WVW, I have a guide on the basics of World v. World to give you like a rundown of like how everything works there if you haven't already seen it. If you have already seen that guide and you're still a little confused, my advice would be find a group that is running around that you can start just like join in and follow. And then, you know, try to just absorb knowledge while you hit what they hit and you'll get credit while you're doing that. People on the middle island, you need to focus on the spites. Those are the number one thing that kills Zoja. They've got the cross swords icon on their head. They, you do get notified when they spawn. Uh, for a new starting player, I'm feeling like Reba is the best way to farm. Is there any better way to find squads of commanders? Um... Reba is, I mean, it, it's been popular for a long time for a reason. It is a way that you can just, like, kind of turn your brain off, run in circles for hours, and get gold. If you enjoy doing that, uh, you can usually find commanders for that in the, uh, what is it called? You go to LFG, uh, it's Central Tyria Squads, I believe. Yeah, right there. See, there's one right there. Uh, so on EU, there's one going right this second. That's that's usually where to find them. Uh, you're saying, is there a better way besides that? By the way, siege machines, there are a lot of siege machines up. Siege group, please start at the top left and then go clockwise around the map and uh, catch up on those because we're behind. And a reminder, because I don't see five dots there, group three is the siege group. Just to get people's attention, that's Devil Winds, Rosen, Cabbage Man, Destroyer, and Farineer. You five should be going to the siege machines, killing them, and then coming back to the middle when they're gone. Uh, do you have to turn into heal Zoja, or can you spam heal on her? During this part of the fight, you see green number? You can heal her with normal heals, but she has a stupidly large hit point pool. So to give her, like, noticeable healing when she's low health, it's essence turn-ins. For the final fight of this place, the only way to heal her is uh, Essence Turnouts. Remember to save your downstate allies if you can, otherwise they'll be gone for a while. Middle group, I think you're okay without me. I'm gonna go help bottom left. I keep seeing like hordes of people going downstate and I'm not sure how many healers they have. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go assist them for a bit. People that are in the middle island, make sure you watch Zoja's hit points in the top right corner. If she gets low, please turn in essences to her. New siege machine is up. Uh, 
Uh, southeast finish. Southeast group, please go to northeast. Go, go, uh, go north from where you are. Bottom left group is done. Bottom left group, go to top left, please. Middle Island is still doing great, so I'll just keep helping this side group for the moment. For the starring. Save your down states. Stack the green circles if you're in the area where those are. Starring again. That was a lot of mechanics at once. Stack the greens. You were my most watched Twitch channel at 422 hours. Rookie numbers. We're going to pump those numbers up. <gasps> Thank you, Frankovine. Are we converging? We are, Jester. Honestly, this is way more fun than standing in the middle. I might have to put myself in the uh, go to the corners groups more often. Although I think the middle gets more loot. Uh, we need a lot of boon rip on this lieutenant. Anyone that's with the commander tag, if you've got it. He's got all the boons right now. Hey, Lord, thank you for the sub. Appreciate that. All right, top right group just finished. Please help top left. Middle is still doing A-OK. -okay. I am stuck in combat. There we go. All right, where is the last target? A siege machine just spawned down here. Uh, northeast of us. Where is it? Is it on an island? Is it above us? 
It's above us. Jumping mushroom? I saw the pings, I just couldn't find the thing. General. Lifting. Just watch the mini map. There's going to be a marker somewhere in a moment. S uh, bottom left, southwest. I think I'm going to use the sky scale launcher. Alright, from this point onward, Zojo will be basically bleeding to death. So make sure that if you have full essence, and if she is not full, which you can see in the top right corner, that you do a delivery. We need a constant stream of those. It's the uh, main way we could lose from this point forward. As far as the boss goes, red areas are bad and chase the booty. Is there a setting to reduce the number of names you see for uh, like you can for character models? If there is, I've never gone looking for it, so not sure. First I was like, boo, I could make her the group, and now I'm happy I don't like the dragon. But that's just like the last part of it. You're happy you missed it just because the last part of it? Master Liu says you can disable character nameplates if you want.
I like seeing the health bars as a healer, but I can totally understand not wanting to see all this. It's moving to a new uh, spot. We need to top Zoja off. Him. Trying to glyphing that. I know, yes, I can. Glyph that guy in the water. Don't know why he was out for a swim this time of day, but. I can't leave combat. Mm. What the hell? I've like, wow. I basically walked to the new location. GG! Nios is not my scene. Let's head Well back. done. Breathe in some fresh air. Uh, coming up the newest episode of Muckluck Reads. Only if it's worth reading. Let's take a look at Thank you for the patch notes. Two Supreme Runes of Holding. Oh shoot, nice. That's like 30 or 40 gold. Well done all. GG. She'll port us out of here in just a second. What event was this? Convergence. This is Convergence's added in the most recent major patch. Has Anet stopped doing drops? Are you talking about on Twitch? It's actually just in the last year that they did drops for the first time, and they've done it a few times since then. So no, I don't think they've stopped. Hmm. Why does the twilight in your inventory have a ring around it? Because it's a, um, what is it called? Gift of twilight? No, not gift of uh, twilight. The thing that you, um, if you bind a twilight to your account, you get that thing so that you can use it to make eternity if you want. 
It's a memory of Twilight. That's what it is. Because uh, you combine Twilight and Sunrise to make Eternity. But if you add Twilight to your Legendary Armory, you can't... You throw it in the Mystic Forge because it's in the Legendary Armory. So now you get that memory thing. Mock, check your DM. Uh, what's up? <laughs> what is this? That was me with the bandana. I got banned from Planet Fitness. They won't let me back. Patch online. Thank you. Uh, do I need to re-log for it? I miss that. That's a Hungarian gym? Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. Let me get the update. One sec. Closing game. Question about selling confetti and fusion. Would you put it on the TP and wait for sell or insta sell? Uh, how much is it worth? If it's worth thousands, I'd probably talk to the overflow community to sell it. So I, w I probably wouldn't use the TP at all. 8888. I'd talk to overflow. So there's a. Uh, Jackals just put a link to Overflow uh, right there. Overflow is a way of uh, selling uh, big expensive items to other players without going through the um, the trading post so that you both save a little bit of money. And I've sold two Eternities on Overflow, I think, and I haven't had any problems. You know, fingers crossed. All right, patch has been downloaded. I'm logging back in. Arc DPS is breaking. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to uninstall it. All right, let's see. No TP tax, yeah. I call that fake, that potato wasn't shaved so cleanly as you are. Oh, thank you, Lobo. Oh, my game just crashed. God dang it. Ah. Uh... All right, hang on. You drive. Go Wars 2, add-ons, arc, delete. Uh, is there anything else I have? The DXGI, I think. I'll delete that and see what happens. All right, trying to log in again. I mean, you would think by now the guy that uh, makes the ARC stuff, he'd add in like a line of code that's like, if new patch and going to crash equals don't. <laughs> like, could he just put that line of code in there for me? Thanks, that'd be great. Why do people uninstall ArcDVS every time I just move the file outside hey, the game Hey, look, folder? it's the tree of birds. How Hitting are the you delete today? key is one click, and I have to reinstall it later anyway, so it's whatever. Uh, let's see. Fun fact, Arc crashes your entire PC if it tracks stuff for too long. Source World v. World fights over 30 minutes. Why are you running Arc in World v. World? All right. Uh, let's go stand in Divinity's Reach for this. I should pull up my own festivals guides for this video. I'm sure it'll come in handy. When I grow up, I'm going to be a brave hero. Mm. Just remember, chat, that Winner's Day is brought to you by the Asura. It was one Asura that invented, invented Winter's Day in Ateria. So that means Asurans are basically Santa Claus. Only the shark rats would farm orphans. No, that's something Divinity's Reach started doing on their own. They weird. How do I delete RTPS with, that, with the add-on manager? Uh, it does have a button to purge add-ons, but I've never had that button work. 
I usually just go to the the my Guild Wars 2 folder, uh, find RTPS, and then just delete it, and then I reinstall it after a few days. What do you need? Can I take Winter's Day off from work? <laughs> sure, let me talk to your boss. Uh, what size is the patch? Itty bitty. Okay. Let's do another episode, as someone said earlier, of Muck Luck Reads. Here we go. Okay, today is Tuesday, December 12th, and this is your Guild Wars 2 news. Uh, Winter's Day is the main point. New holiday just started. Come join us in celebrating Winter's Day. Toy maker Tix has made his annual visit to Divinity's Reach to spread seasonal cheer and festivity. Yes, if any of you are new to Guild Wars 2, please know that in this world, the Asurans are Santa Claus. Uh, if you're in Divinity's Reach and you're looking at all this holiday stuff, do not neglect looking up at your Lord and Savior ticks. Um, bring the cheer of Winter's Day to the distant north in the secret layer of the Snowmen. Complete daily achievements to earn fanciful holiday weapons. Save Winter's Day for the orphans spread around Divinity's Reach by giving them wrapped gifts. A uh, quick note there, if you are new to the game and you hear other people talk about the orphan farm, it is not as bloody as they make it sound. They're actually farming, uh, giving gifts to orphans because it's a very uh, big way of getting karma if you fancy doing that. I don't have the patience for that, but a lot of people do it. Uh, test your snow throwing skills against other players in Snowball Mayhem. Experience the joy of jumping in Winter Wonderland. Defend against waves of toys in Toy Apocalypse. And help keep Tix's airship, the Infinarium, in order. You'll also see Winter's Day gifts appearing all around Tyria. The annual Winter's Day Traditions meta achievement has been updated with a new armor reward, the Winter Fur Shoulders. Look your best for the festivities while warding off Winter Chill. Last year's meta achievement reward, the Winter's Day Snow Boots, can now be purchased from a Charity Core Seraph Festival's rewards vendor. Winter Fur Shoulders. Uh, let me see if I can use the preview utility here. Uh, winter Fur. She got the shoulders with the fur. Here we go. All right, that's it. Oh, yes, we saw the uh, this neck warmer thing in a recent uh, video that they put out. Okay, so there's that. Uh, the new Sacred Solstice weapon set is now available. Earn progress toward completing the annual Winter's Day Traditions meta achievement or the weekly Winter's Day festivities achievement to receive a weapon of your choice. Okay, Sacred Solstice. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, Sacred Solstice Schwad. Hang on. All right, there's the Schwad. There's the hammer. It's got a little crown on it. Uh, longbow. Short bow. I like the chains. Axe. Dagger. Greatsword. Mace. Pistol. Rifle. Scepter. Staff, Focus, ooh, it's like a brazier. Not to be confused with brazier. That is a very different word. I learned one embarrassing night in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, torch, that's a torch. Okay, uh, Warhorn, and Shield. When I see this torch, I think of those like glow sticks that you snap and then they glow for a while. Okay. Ah, uh, that's the Sacred Solstice weapon set. Three new weapons are now available as rare drops from Winter's Day gifts. They can also be purchased from Sparking Stone. All right, let me see. Uh, Charity Core, Charity Core. Uh, oh, there's so many people here. Why are there so many people here? It's almost like a new holiday just started or something. I am looking for Sparky. There you are. Hello, Sparking Stone. Show me what you what you got. Show me what you got. All right, I don't know which of these are new, so we'll just go through all of them really quickly. Grant's Vow, Duena's Promise, Custom Candy Cane Hammer, Great Cracker's Legend, Silent Forest Bell, Call of Cheer, Ornamented Focus. That is very flappy. Ornamented Shield. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the ornaments just bounce all over the place. Oh my god. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, they just flail all over. Okay. <laughs> uh, an ornamented staff. Oh man, I was kind of hoping this one was going to have ornaments like all over it, just bouncing all over the place. <laughs> all right, so that's the new stuff at Sparking Stone. 
Uh, a new mini has been added to the items offered by Charity Core Sarah Festival's reward vendor. Uh, there are so many people here with that name. Hang on. Let's see. Do you sell minis? No. Do you sell minis? No. Do you sell minis? They all have the same name. Uh, it's probably one of these. Enchanted Snowball? Nope, that's a, that's a novelty. Plush Jorms, Large Rose Gift, Endless Angry Snowman Tonic, Winter's Day Boot Box. Uh, there's the snow, the Winter's Day Snow Boot Box from last year. Festive Sweater, Mini Freezy's Heart. Is it that? I feel like that was already in the game. All right, there's Angry Snowman, Mini Ticks. That's uh, Santa Claus, Mystical Snowflake, Reindeer, Corgi, Mini Calico Cat, Cuckoo. Wait, what? Where's the Cuckoo? Huh? Hold on. Cat? Cuckoo. Okay, well, it's invisible, but apparently the plush cuckoo is the new one. But, uh, the preview. Something's wrong with the preview. Uh, a new winter-themed guild decorations has been added. Updated Freezy's event timer in Secret Layer of the Snowmen to indicate that Freezy will become enraged when the timer ends. Fixed an issue that caused enemy toys and toy apocalypse to occasionally teleport directly to their destination. A number of festival-related issues have been fixed to ensure a happy holiday for all heroes. Winter's Day will be active until January 2nd at noon Pacific time. See you in Divinity's Reach. General changes. Removed the enable stereoscopic rendering option from the graphics menu. This was a DX9 only option and DX9 renderer is no longer available. Stereoscopic rendering is no longer supported by the major graphics vendors. All right. Remove the refresh rate option from the graphics menu. This was, again, a DX9 thing. Okay. Fixed an issue that could allow passengers on Siege Turtles to earn achievements related to completing races without using a mount. <laughs> Yo, if a turtle won the race, I feel like the passenger... Let him have it. If a turtle won the race... All right, fix an issue that could cause non-participants at a race event to receive the race timer enhancements when the uh, event began. Added further messaging when a player tries to start Chapter 11 of Guild Wars 2 Soto story without having completed Chapter 6 with any character. <laughs> it just says don't. Fixed an issue in Molten Furnace that allowed players to interact with the exit lever and depart before the quest was completed. Fixed an issue in the battle for Cragstead that swapped Ornman and Haslow. And fixed an issue in the Ignatius encounter that, uh, that caused the rubble piles to sometimes break sooner than intended. Items. The Arcane Flow Infusion has been added to Ceratox Wares and Lion's Arch for players who have previously acquired the infusion from the Wizard Vault. Convergences. We are updating some of the repeatable achievements and convergences to better reward players who split off to deal with the threats on the outer sections of the instance. Convergence Creature Crusher, progress in this achievement no longer gives a fixed amount when at 200% player participation. Adjusted the amount of progress granted when crushing different kinds of cryptus. The achievement text will be updated in a future release. Siege Engine Stomper, adjusted the amount of progress granted when stomping siege engines. Um, that's very intentionally vague. Uh, let's see. Well, I actually got Creature Crusher just a little while ago. Yeah, I've completed it 50 times already. You were getting this thing crazy crazy quickly siege engine stomper um so it says 20 siege machines which is what it said before i don't know how much progress you get now like when it now does it say destroy 20 siege machines and you destroy one and you kill five on the counter i don't know uh but anyway i can talk about that the convergence thing you would have some people on the middle island keeping zoja safe they were fighting waves of crap and then you had people on the outer islands that were killing the bosses and then you had the people hunting the siege machines. However, on the center island, in one convergence, you might kill six or eight hundred weak little dudes. And the creature crusher was like, kill 200 dudes for an extra box of loot. So the people on the center island might get like four extra boxes of loot. But 20 siege machines? You wouldn't kill 20 siege machines in one convergence. Like one entire convergence, you'd probably get less than 10. So the people on the center island were getting more loot than the people on the outer islands. So they recognize that and they're working on trying to change that. Uh, prof skills. General. Relic of the Monk. Fixed an issue that caused this effect to have an internal cooldown. Ugh. I'm glad about that. Uh, Relic of the Monk. 
is uh, one that I'm probably using right now. Let me swap back to the game. It gives, increases how much healing you do on other people um, as long as you keep providing boons. Every time you provide boons, you build up more stacks of Relic of the Monk. Um, and the stacks fall off after three seconds of not giving someone boon. So if it has an internal cooldown, that becomes even more challenging to keep that up. Uh, Telluric Wrath fixed an issue that caused Ignatius' first attack to do more damage. Ellie changes fixed an issue that caused hammer orbs to be incorrectly removed when swapping to a conjured weapon. Mesmer, Lingering Thoughts, fixed an issue that caused the skill to have a higher cooldown than intended for players in PvE and Virtuosos in all game modes. Axes of Symmetry, fixed an issue that caused the skill to have a higher cooldown than intended for Virtuosos. Ego Restoration, fixed an issue that caused this trait to cleanse a condition from allies when shattering. Malicious Sorcery, fixed an issue that caused this trait to interrupt the player when activated. And Warrior has been deleted. Uh, so those are your notes for Tuesday, December 12th. Uh, I'm just playing. Heat the Soul, fixed an issue that caused this trait to give less might than intended in PvP and World v. World. I will say one change that I think was pretty urgent that I'm sad to see they did not do today that I'm going to shout out is Engineer Medkit 2. Uh, they recently redid Engineer Medkit 2, and last I checked, which was I think the day before yesterday, it is still healing bosses. Now, the, not that just one heal of Medkit 2 is going to do much to a boss. They uh, it weakened it considerably. It heals for like 1k around you and then uh, 6 seconds of regeneration if you've got full boon. The problem is that many bosses, when they get to like 50% health, they'll, you know, they, they'll monologue about their plans and then summon sharks with lasers on their heads or something like that. And then if you if they uh, you accidentally heal them with medkit two, which should not be possible, like they get to fifty, they start doing their transition thing, and then you heal them back to fifty one, and they hit fifty again, they'll do it again. Uh, and there's many instances where you can have the bosses just bug out entirely and be unkillable or they will uh, just redo a phase transition more than one time because of a poorly timed engineer medkit too. So if you are a support engineer, um, just please know about that bug with medkit too until you've heard from someone that they fixed it and be very careful about using that on bosses when, uh, when that, they're about to phase into something else because it can bug it out really bad right now. So I wish I had seen that today. But in any case, let's talk about Winter's Day. So Winter's Day is a wonderful time of year in Divinity's Reach. Uh, a bunch of different activities that you can do. If it is your first Winter's Day inside of Guild Wars 2, we do, of course, have a uh, guides for that from, uh, from previous ones. We've got a Get to the Point guide for Winter's Day. I'll have that link down below, as well as this video here. Now, this video is about something I highly recommend everyone get during Winter's Day. Now, what is it? There is a quest line that you can only do in Guild Wars 2 during Winter's Day, which is so during like uh, from now until like two to three weeks from now. And what it is, is it allows you to uh, get an, a Star of Gratitude, which eats Imperial Fragments and poops out loot. So if you've got any characters that are just full of Imperial Fragments all the time, this thing works year round. It'll eat like uh, up to, it, it, it randomly eats between three and six stacks of 50 each day and gives you loot each day. So you, I use this year round because I got it like two years ago. Additionally, the exact same quest that gives you this item gives you the Christmas tree in your home instance. So if you are a fan of farming your home instance each day like I am, it gives you Christmas presents year round. So if you've ever wondered how people are getting Christmas presents year-round, it's because of that. So every day you can eat Imperial Fragments, and every day you can get Christmas presents, and then you could sell them or open them, whatever you wish. Um, so highly, highly recommend, even if you don't care about the holiday stuff, to do this right here. Um, this is more of a rundown of all the different fun activities you can do during Winter's Day, the Bell Choir thing, the Strike Mission, the Jumping Puzzle. Uh, all of that jazz is there, so if you need any of that, there will be links to both of those videos down below. And if you've got any tips on Winter's Day or any corrections, you know, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, people are pinging me and telling me also show the new stuff on the store. Let me take a look and see what is new here. Uh, I immediately see a plush sky scale. 
Hello. Oh my god, he's adorable. Man, I got the Cryptus one just to flaunt. Like, look at me, look at this quest I did, but this thing is so fluffy. I do still use my plush griffin. I, I could go full plush, just everything plush. All right, so that's pretty awesome. I don't know why it's showing me the jumpstart package over there. A little bit of a bug there with that click. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? So there's a Gilder Suli jumpstart package, welcome package. Uh, some emotes. Uh, I think this is all some stuff that's been here for a while. It's so fluffy, I'm going to die. <laughs> uh, okay. Did the black lion chest change any? That is something else I have been checking each time I do one of these videos. Let's see, we've got reflective koi weapons, clockwork, scythe, staff, skin, which is uh, awesome, but I think that has been there for a few days. Uh, and the dove lover's bench chair. I'm not sure if that's new or not. However, there you go. There's a dove lover. You can sit there with your loved one while birds just stare at you uncomfortably. There you go. Is the snowflake gobbler back? Uh, I'm not sure. I already have it, so I'm not sure if I can even see it in the store if it is there. Chat, can any of you confirm if the snowflake gobbler is in the store? Anyone that does not have it already? Hold on, YouTube. We're going to get you that information. I do have one already. It's uh, it's on one of my characters. I'm not sure which one. Hold on. Gobbler. Who has my snowflake gobbler? Esquire has it. I think that's my engineer. Bonky says I find nothing. Might not be there. Mm. Well, if you're interested, the snowflake gobbler. Uh, if you do get what you, know, if it does become available, it is a device that you can feed snowflakes. You double click it, and it opens like a merchant type window. And you can spin snowflakes to get a bunch of different uh, buffs that uh, increase like XP gain and magic find and stuff like that. It can be used year round. You just have to keep buying snowflakes to off the trading post usually to feed the thing if you uh, choose to get it. But it has to be in the store for you to get it if they choose to do that. Okay. Uh, Bluebell says, I got the plush sky scale already. It breathes confetti. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. It doesn't breathe fire. It breathes confetti. All the more reason to get it. All right. I think that's all the news for today. Uh, like, subscribe, algorithm, and uh, comments down below. All right, there we go. <laughs> Smooth outro. Smooth outro. All right, there's a new set in the claim tickets you can view. Crap, it's too late. It's too late. Where is the claim tickets? Do I have any? Um, let me see. Keep the group alive. I'll be right back. You know what? I know I'm going to stand on the fire just this. so you don't yeah. get bored. This is an easy way. Uh, is the jumpstart package worth it? I haven't looked at it yet. Hang on. Is it worth it to buy gifts of, for karma? Uh, doing the gifts for the orphans is a karma farm that's been around for a long time. So it's, it's a pretty popular one. Thundercrag? Are these new? Yes, no. Crap! All right, now I have to edit. God dang it. Okay, little uh, edited intro into the video later on. I do, uh, bleh. I, I already hate that, I already hate that. Okay, last minute entry into the video. There is a new Thunder Crag set of weapons that cost Black Lion claim tickets. Quick rundown if any of you are interested in any of these. This is the axe, the longbow, the short bow. The dagger, I like that. The focus, this is interesting. So it's all like lightning combined with fire. The great sword, the hammer, which kind of also looks like a big ax. Uh, the mace, that looks incredibly painful. <laughs> it's like just shards of broken glass. Uh, pistol, rifle, scepter, Shield, staff, sword, torch, and warhorn. There we go. And again, those are available at the Black Lion Claim Ticket people. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, now I have to edit. Ew. 
Not very wintry? No. They're very summery. Uh, time to decorate the guild hall. You can. I need the plushy sky scale. Now we just need plushy skimmer and roller beetle. Hmm. Let me see. Let's see. How much is it? 1600 Hmm. I got enough. Hold on, just be here, because some of that was given to me for giveaways. So, let's do this. If I want 1,600 gems. It's 750 gold. Sure. Okay. I like how it says, excellent choice. Hi, Chip. What's up? He's thinking about it. Recovered Convergence Rewards Box. Okay. Alright, here we go, here we go. Uh, mounts. Alright, <laughs> going from the edgelord to the exact opposite. There we go. So it does breathe fire for its attacks. Maybe it's like it's uh, maybe it's the idle animation. All right, hold on. We're just going to observe for a moment. Hey. Chip is jealous. Skies go plushy? Yes. Waiting for him to break. Oh. There it is! <laughs> There's the confetti breath. There's the confetti breath. Now I'm wondering about the animation where he feeds it a fish. Oh, there he goes. Oh, I didn't see what he gave him. I didn't see what he fed it. Like the uh, the robot sky scale, you feed it like a circuit board or something. It's like this. It's like a gizmo. Wait, does it? Oh, it's making like squeaky noises when it breathes. Hang on. Uh. The plush skins do all that. The other plush skins don't breathe confetti jackals. Oh, there we go. I think it fed it like a doll. I think that would look like a stuffed doll. I'm waiting for another breath now that I adjusted the volume. I definitely heard a squeaky when he bit that. Yeah, okay, I heard it. Yeah, there were some little toot toots. What? Why does it do that noise?
<laughs> it's like a wind-up toy. Ah, uh, this is fun. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we change the volumes back. Thank God it's not a squeaky toy. That would be something. What if you get hit while you're riding it? Does it squeak? Uh, let's see. Dies. Hmm. What kind of die channels does it have? So there's that one, that one, the little shield thing on the front, and that one. Hey, what's up? Chat, someone is tugging on my arm right now. Someone is uh, jealous, I think, of the sky skill. Chip comes on stream and instantly shows butt just like Sharp Ash would do. Oh my god. It's not that t not that kind of stream. Hmm. I'm not sure what colors I would change this to if it Oh! Hi. He said he wasn't done yet. Your plush this war claw. Is very popular with the children and those easily excited. Behold, the Lion's Arch Fountains. Incidentally, this is also where 80% of all tour-related... The dismount is the same swirly aura as the other plushy skins. I'll check the dismount in a sec. Is everyone having a great time? I know I am. Ugh, do the same color as Chip on the sky scale. Like the orange? He's like light orange and dark orange. Look at those happy with it. He's purring. Riding those mounts on an Asura is a whole different mood. Yeah, it looks like a kid riding a, a big uh, toy thing. Uh, someone said test the dismount. Yeah. Yeah, it does have... So, like, this is the Griffin. And this is the Sky Scale. Hmm, let's see. You know, that ore thing was blue. I wonder if it's related to that color thing right there. Just to test. I'm gonna do that. Now it's red. I think it is. I think this part of the color palette is the dismount animation. Let's try... Make it white. And now the swirl is white. Yep, it is. Hmm. Oh, what? Wait, these are the defaults? So what a, What you get when you buy it is not the defaults? Interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna go around blinding people.
Sky scale dash has sound. Yeah, we were looking at that a minute ago. Codename flashback. Isn't there one that's like bone? Yeah. Something like that. Let's see. Uh, that's a bit too much. I'll do that for now. Color your own plush scale doll. Yep. I wanted to say Andy and crayon on the foot. <laughs> it looks like an IRL plushie. Holy heck. Coming soon to a real store on the Guild Wars 2 website. Plushy sky scales. It has toe beans. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> If they don't offer pl uh, plushy IRL sky scale, they are foolish, I tell you. It would be easy money. How old is Chip? He's uh, about five. You made him into a guardian main, my eyes. <laughs> when I dyed him white. Oh. Uh, let's see. What else can we do? Uh, let's see, we got that Christmas stuff now. I suppose I'm, I'm obligated to do Christmas stuff. Maybe the Christmas strike mission. The game crashes after the update? No, Arc DPS crashes after the update. It's probably that. Oh god, it's a pit! Oh no, it's fine. I believe the strike mission one was over here. Hooray, hooray! It's winter's day! Secret layer of the snowman. Besides Winter's Day, any new updates? Yeah, there was a few minor things that were added today, but Winter's Day was definitely most of it. Is this secret layer something like a raid? It's a strike mission. Where you beat up a snowman. It's a little bit of trash mobs and then a snowman boss. Shiver Peak Strikes, uh, similar. The new Black Lion chest here has different animals with each race, really. He just tapped me on the shoulder, did you guys see that? Awesome already in pet chip. I'm already petting chip. Pet him more. I'm petting him. Last thing I want to come back from freezing outside, see ice all over my screen. Where's the global warming when you need it? Oh my gosh.
Will there be a Snowflake Gobbler pack? I would think they would sell it. If they don't, I'd be surprised. Party has been locked. Breezy isn't evil. He's just wounded. Let's crack his cold shell and heal my friend. Come face the greatest snowman ever made. Never made sense to me how we uh, heal him by just barraging him with snowballs. Percussive maintenance, maybe. That's what the dentist is giving me Thursday. <laughs> She's gonna beat me up till she says my teeth are better and then charge me. All the money. His heart feels warmer because we threw snowballs at it. Heal his heart. You want to order some biscuits? Chip is uh, stocking up right now. Uh, wasn't this the first type of strike mission content that made for Gilders 2? 
No, but it's the first one related to a festival, I think. He's smiley now. It feels good to be all snow again. I'm full of winter's day joy. And it's time to share it round. <laughs> GG. You cat is making biscuits. Yeah, he does that. That blanket really brings the bi the biscuits out of him. I could have a different blanket or like a towel on the top of that tower or nothing, and we don't get them this often. But that one really brings the biscuits out. Hmm. Let's see. Where's the jumping puzzle? Yeah. I think this is it. Let's see if I remember right. Yes, this is it. What's new this year in the festival? Mm. Different rewards. I got a uh Here's a link to the new patch notes, Malik, if you want it. He did. Ah, I'm almost dead! Oh, now my hit points may become an issue. Hey, first try! Prototype allowed here? No. It's not. All right, beat the jumping puzzle. Pretty sure I accidentally did it on like medium or hard mode instead of doing it on easy mode because it took the wrong path at the beginning. Hmm. Can you believe there's people that'll just go in there and do that over and over and over for hours? Crazy. Some of them are probably in my chat. Do you know a good way to farm snow diamonds to unlock the skins? Are they tradable? I found a great way to farm snow diamonds. I I can get 250 of them in like a second. <laughs> You took mid, that was medium mode. Okay. 
I feel like I and the rest of the Chalice Porting Guild I'm in are guilty of that much. What? Buying snow diamonds? something to report the law is on your side farming the jp over and over oh that yeah yeah yeah. i got it uh i think spooky meant spending hours in that jumping puzzle you just did over and over uh do all the things trade the snowflakes for diamonds uh i think that's here right that's 1000 snowflakes for a diamond i don't have a thousand snowflakes right now Although I do get Christmas presents year-round, I usually just sell the presents because I don't like dealing with them. Because opening it fills your bag with crap. Stay calm, stay alert. You can spend karma on them. You have something to oh, look at the meme map. Seems that uh, chat is sitting on the infinarium. Yeah. Ship is the bringer of Christmas. Uh, since it won't load properly in the preview, the bird plushie uh, is the plushie cuckoo model. Yeah, I I was pretty sure of that because you can see from its tooltip it looks like the same thing. Oh yeah, you get a free gift here each day. Long cast time. Uh, what's the watchwork portal device? Is it worth buying or is it a one-time use? Uh, I think that one's a one-time use. The white mantle portal device is uh, reusable. I think the watchwork one is um, consumable. Mm, orphan farming season is open. Although technically true. Yeah. All right. I think I'm good. Did the new strike mission. Probably do it again after reset. Don't really feel like farming the JP. I suck at the bell game. I don't want to do the bell game. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's take a look at Dragon Storm. Should I be doing Tix's Infinarium solo? Ah, uh, it's a group activity, but you could play it solo if you want. It's just for fun, right? So you can do what you, do what you want. All right, let's test the water. Is anyone here interested in doing a private, immediate dragon storm? I'm on EU. There's the squadron command. We'll see if we can get some takers. See if anyone is interested. Instant dragon storm. Chip is out. Yep, he's done. Hopefully he finished the biscuits and he didn't just leave them half made. Dragonstorm could drop ascended. Mm, Dragonstorm has a drop that's worth a thousand gold. Uh, I think there is a frost saw can drop there. That's an ascended sword. Let's see. Um... I don't know if that's the right place to put it in the group menu, but we'll see. You can get Gift of All Reen, which lets you choose an Ascended Weapon as a rare drop. I heard Invader Zim. That was, a uh, Gur. Yeah. Uh, the people... Tier 3 and above patrons on my Patreon can pick a sound to interrupt the stream with once per day, and that was one of them. Do you ever do the marionette? Mmm, I haven't done it in a long time, no. What is happening? This feels like a less popular oh activity. I hate Christmas music. I was a good boy! Ah, this is worse! Come on, guys. I 
I feel attacked. Oh my god, Jed, it's rave time! All the noises. I think the last time I did the marionette was around the time it came out. So I got plenty of room in the squad if anybody else wants to join. I can use my new sky scale in here. Break the champion's connection to the dragons. Then we use that magic against them. What'll happen to Bram? Jim Ryland. Bram knew the risks. Nice of you to clear out the trash for me, Commander. Did you? Oh. And then he dies. Jormag has not yet joined him, champion. You must. How you can't get more playing it every time while having everything in the game? I do one too much recharge after I get burned. Um, I play lots of Guild Wars 2 like one day a week. Uh, Tuesday, which you know, Guild Wars Tuesday. <laughs> uh, I play a lot of Guild Wars 2 on this day. And it's, for me at this point, it's more about hanging out with the community than about like, it's not like on Monday night, I'm like, oh man, I get to hit Ryland tomorrow, woo! You know, it's, it's more about hanging out with the peeps. But yeah, I mean, burnout happens from time to time. Like I used to stream this game seven days a week and then I got burned out. So then I changed it to be less than that. And I do a lot of variety now too. Didn't go to plan. Tempted to get the jump start kit, character back. slot, it's shared slot, VIP pass, copper pet, salvage dramatic, set of infinite well, gathering tools. Guess I could just farm it the golds to buy the glyphs on the TP. You could. You've got options. Ram, are you yourself? <laughs> Time here we fight. We're not here to kill you. We're here to kill Primordus. We are Primordus. I guess it's worth pointing out on that glyph conversation that if you buy volatile magic gathering tools, you're basically getting three of the glyph. You're getting one for the mining pick, the logging axe, and the harvesting scythe. Plus the infinite tools themselves. But if you already have infinite tools, or you don't care about the infinite tools, glyphs might be cheaper. 
Glad I'm not a long time player. I'm not bored yet because I have so many more builds still to learn. <laughs> yeah, even on the times that I've been born out of Guild Wars 2, I still promoted it because it's a great game. One that uh, you can get hundreds of hours of entertainment in without even spending anything, which is wild. What glyphs? Oh, we're talking about volatile magic glyphs, Shinji. Mark, my Twitch recap 23 is all your content, not surprised. You got good taste, April! My champion will teach you to fear the frost. Nice through reinforcements! Love the insta buy on the plushie. Great thing about saving up uh, money is when you see something stupid and you want it, you can get it. Or when you suddenly need a root canal, you can afford it. As long as Jormag is connected uh. to the power of the champion and the frozen, they will keep Primordial's cow. Don't let up. We've got to bring both champions down. The first time my friends heard Tommy were really confused because she sounded familiar, then we realized she's Jimmy Neutron. Yep. She is a voice actress that's been in a lot of stuff. Thanks for the great stream. Not heading to bed. Good night, Jackals. now the champions are hanging on to dragons via thread talking about voice actors um jormag right there jormag's voice actress is the lady who was the um teacher in jedi fallen order and jedi survivor I forget her name. Someone in chat will say it. Take a couple rounds. Stay strong. Seer. Why isn't there a snowflake gobbler on the TP, Eric? Uh, I don't know. I would think this would be a good time to put it up there to sell some.
I heard Bram is an elder dragon. I've heard that too. From a very reliable source. Champion, the connection's weak. The prison's already to launch you closer, Commander. Attack now! As the sky scale is not plush, does it catch on fire when attacking? Do you mean now plush? Not sure. <laughs> Maybe it's made of asbestos or something. <laughs> the poison plush sky scale. The asbestos sky scale. To the prisms. Champion, I'm pulling you back. I like how I've got a button that says greet. Yes, I wish to greet Jorvag and Primordis. Greet them. Hello! Oh, they're busy. <laughs> it's done, champion. Here's the plush sky skull of unique blast animations. No, but when it's, it's idle animation, instead of breathing fire, it breathes confetti and makes like a honk noise. GG! Thanks for the funnel. Uh, for donating to the orphans, is there something you have to do other than the unopened gifts? I don't see an option to donate. Mm. If you look up GW2 space orphan guide or orphan farm guide on YouTube, there's probably tons of them from previous years. Speak. I think it has to be gift wrapped presents or something. But I, I did it once years ago and I don't remember the answer to that question. Mug, have you played any of the Expedition games? They seem to be CRPGs. So they might be interesting for you. Who's Primordis's voice actor? A drowning frog. Just, blah, that's it. That's all he's got. Uh, Expedition games. That does not ring a bell. No, I played Path of Exile Expedition League. I don't think that's what you mean, though. Mug, I got a glyph question. Are they separated by gathering tool? Uh, yes, they are separate. So if you've got one on your mining pick, you're only going to get that glyph reward when you're mining not when you're chopping trees not when you're harvesting plants you would want a glyph on each of them if possible so i can finally finish my for the children achievement to get the christmas tree for my home instance yes that is available right now and i recommend everybody do it because it has two rewards it has the christmas tree for your home instance and it also has the reward that gives you the um what is it? Uh, the converter that eats Imperial Fragments. I know everybody here is overflowing with Imperial Fragments. It'll eat those each day, uh, like up to a stack of them possibly, and then give you just random stuff, which is usually just vendor fodder, but you can hit sell junk and get money. But sometimes it's good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just gonna chill and chat for a few minutes. Uh, just gonna chill and chat for a little bit, and then I'm gonna get some lunch afterward. Star of Gratitude? Uh, this right here. Yeah, Star of Gratitude is from the same quest line that gives you the Christmas tree.
Uh, you get wrapping paper and presents, possibly from a guy along the rim of the pit, then talk to another guy along the rim of the pit to convert them to a type of gift you want to give to orphans. According to Thistledown's name. Can you have one glyph and swap it between all three tools, if I'm not wrong? Uh, yeah, but that would add a lot of work to it. But yes, in theory, you could do that. Now, if you had it on, for example, if you had a character at the Flax Farm, you know, that's all gathering. You could just have that character use the glyph just on the gathering tool and it'd be easy. Uh, I use my Imperial Fragments on Foot Talks of Opusing Crystals, so they're useful to me. Fair. Totally fair. I would say a majority of level 80 people, though, are often just like, what do I do with all this Bloodstone Dust and Imperial Fragments and Dragonite Ore? I don't know. And this is the time when you can uh, take care of one of those. Have they updated the gem store yet? Looking for a PC on this. The gem store? I mean, I just got the new Skyscale off the gem store, so it does have some new stuff on it. Uh, was there any new update recently? My game keeps crashing. Tattered Tank, the uh, win Winner's Day update came out today, and your Arc D if you run Arc DPS, that's what's crashing you. It's so fluffy. It is! I'm gonna die! I updated it. No, you gotta remove Arc. It, I don't think it has an update. Like... The, the new game, the game has an update, and Arc DPS is crashing the game if you have it on installed Arc. Um, mm, 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 mm. Hi, Muck, do you read the YouTube chat? Yes, after pow. I go back and forth between the two. I'm reading YouTube chat right now. Uh, base principle, you buy trash item for money, buy wrapping paper with karma, combine the two and give it to an orphan. Have a look at the guide over and optimize it. The two, yes. Um, have you shown the new skins yet to make the patch video? Curious what the Sacred Solstice weapons look like. I did show them, but we're just chatting right now. I can show them again. Um, uh, let's see. That's the sword. That is the hammer with its little hat. The longbow. The short bow. I like the chains on it. The axe. The dagger. The great sword. Mace. Pistol. Rifle. Scepter. Staff. Looks like candy on top. Uh, focus. Brazier. That's cool. Uh, torch, Warhorn, and Shield. And that's it. Uh, I saw people saying they make tons of karma on Winter's Day. Is it just from the events? There's a popular activity people call the Orphan Farm, which is buying tons of presents and then delivering them to orphans around Divinity's Reach. If you look up a guide on it, you can find uh, guides from previous years on the best way to optimize that. But delivering the uh, orphans' uh, gifts will give you karma. So, and if you're doing it really well, you could be running laps around the city, just like gift, 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 and get tons of karma during that time period. <laughs> the best part is the gifts are weapons. <laughs> They're gonna, they're gonna go after uh, whoever went after their parents. Orphan farm sounds shady. Yes, it does. <laughs> I always have to spell out what it is because there's always some new guy in chat like, huh? Ah! And you know, whenever the orphan farm comes up. Mike, did you see you could buy the arcane flow infusion from the Skritz and Lion Arch? Uh, I did see there was an update about that in the patch notes. Uh, I don't want it, but yeah, cool. Is that the plushy sky scale? Yes. And he's eating stuffed treats right now. One hundred gold and fifty ecto, though. Oh, is that it? I don't know. I, I, when I since it was a infusion, I just assumed it'd be way more expensive. Also, I just sat down for lunch here. Right on. High excels here. They're toy weapons. I mean, toy weapons is fine. Yeah, I grew up with Nerf guns and Super Soakers. 
Uh, an army of child soldiers in the service of Queen Jenna. It's just like Skyrim. You just get a, a whole bunch of the uh, invulnerable children to fight your battles for you. Tattered Tank says, hey, Muck, we're going to get some Ascended Armor without doing PvP or actually crafting them. Uh, tatted, this right here is a video I did on almost all the ways in the game to get Ascended Armor. Uh, there's a list there of uh, the many methods if you're interested. Ho, ho, honk. <laughs> a very Christmas-themed individual has just ran up to me. Nerf guns with needles on the front. Uh, no, you're not invited. That's like super soakers with boiling water. <laughs> you're not supposed to bring those to the battle. Frozen paintballs? Oh my god. It has toe beans. Toe beans. Chat, toe beans! Frozen paintballs, just reading this gave me bruises. Boiling water super soaker sounds like hot showers, to be honest. But thank you for all your guides and community engagement brings you the game. You're welcome, Noodle. I'm glad you enjoy it. Wouldn't have much of a job if people didn't watch. My Emerson is ru your Emerson is ruined. Immersion. TF2 sniper mains know how to win super soaker duels with malicious efficiency. <laughs> Don't the TF2 snipers have a grenade where it's like they throw a bottle of pee? Are you implying that they uh, fill super soakers with piss? Because don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Anyone know the quickest way of getting snowflakes? Trading post. I missed a few years of Winter's Day now, so I need loads of snow diamonds. Trading post. I mean, you could go farm, like, you could go do the Winter's Day jumping puzzle over and 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 over. Or you could just do whatever you like to do for gold and then spend that gold on snowflakes. It's a jar, not a bottle. Yes, I'm implying that. Okay. I never actually played TF2. Uh, I've seen all of the, you know, like, memes and the meet the guys and stuff like that, so I know the characters. I actually played the first Team Fortress. A lot. I think it was included in, like, one of the Half-Life boxes that I bought back when Half-Life came out. It came with Team Fortress, and I got hooked on that. I played it a ton. Never played TF2. The orange box? I think it was the orange box. Uh... Uh, no, Orange Box came with TF2. I played TF1. So I, I got some kind of package deal that had, um... So Half-Life came out, and there was a another game that, that was related to Half-Life where you played one of the cops in the compound called Blue Shift. And then there was another one where you played one of the military guys. It was the same story from a different perspective. And I got this box that had, like, all of those, and it had Team Fortress 1. And, like, I didn't even buy it for Team Fortress 1, but then I ended up getting absolutely hooked on it. I played it for hundreds of hours. Opposing Force, thank you. I played it for hundreds of hours after that. But, uh, yeah, I, I loved playing either medic and healing people or engineer and fixing people's armor and making turrets. What's your favorite infusion? Depends. Uh, like, on my, my engineer has the one with, like, the flaming eye. Uh, on some people that are doing, like, a creepy theme, I like that one where they look like they're made of, like, wood. Not Silvari. It's like toy... It's like the wooden toy infusion or something like that. I think that looks nice if you're going for, like, a dark vibe. Uh, toy shell. Thank you. I'm always forgetting the names of things. But, yeah, that one. That one looks pretty neat sometimes. Honestly, I think the ones where, like, your whole body is glowing look... It's, it's a bit much... Like, you'll notice, I have full legendary gear. I don't even show most of it. 
I just, uh, I think a little goes a long way. Like, if your character looks like a light bulb, I don't have any hate for that, but I'm not going to dress in that. Oh, man, I had a funny thing the other day. Hold on a sec. Uh, let me see. Where is... Okay, I was playing Path of Exile the other day, and I had this happen to my character. Right leg, left leg, banner that's on my back, the rest of me. And I posted this, and I said, my new Path of Exile fashion is on point. And someone replied, uh, first WoW steals Guild Wars 2 Sky Scale, and now PoE is stealing our fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is it. When, you're, when you're running around with your 20 infusions, this is all I see, you freaking idiot. You just look like that. You ponder the orb. I am the orb. That's all I see. Uh, let's see. Usama on YouTube says, what's the most fun class for you? For me, uh, Druid, which is a type of ranger, is my favorite. I play a few others sometimes, but that's my, my top one for sure. Mom said I could be anything, so I became the sun. <laughs> it's funny that World v. World Diffusion has issues with radiant armor and causes it to glitch. Also, if you have the new hood, it puts your face on top of the hood. <laughs> I wish you could use the infusion to turn off the effect, Lao Tay says. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can do that. I mean, you could turn off some items. Like, you know, you could, you know, I wonder if you put the infusion in your hat and turn off the hat if it hides the infusion. I don't know. I've never tried that. Rhapsody, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate that. Chad, have you heard about Twitch Prime? You too can subscribe to your favorite streamer or Muckluck and support their ability to pay for dentist appointments. <laughs> and get no more ads at the same time. It's true. It's uh, odd that the World v. World infusion clashes with World v. World armor. That seems like, of all the things to clash with, the armor from the same place? Very unfortunate. Guild Wars 2 infusions, a guardian in general, are a crusade against people with epilepsy. <laughs> Dude, I was playing balloons with my kid the other day, and we're, we've gotten to the point where we can reliably, like, you win at a wave 100. But you, get, you can go into free play mode. You can go as far as you want. But by, like, wave 200, there's just a million projectiles bouncing around the screen. And it's really laggy. And I'm like, dude, I gotta stop. I'm, I'm getting sick looking at this. <laughs> it's just a constant just blah, bullets all over the place lag. Can't see anything. Uh... Thank you very much for all the YouTube content. For getting into raids lately. Your content really helped me out. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Rapsy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yo, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, yesterday's guide was so well received. Uh, for those who didn't see it, I released a new video yesterday on the 12-minute routine I do each day to be rich in Guild Wars 2. It has a picture of my gold. And it's a uh, best performing video in uh, over a month. There's a plush sky scale? Yeah, it came out today. Just came out. Mmm... That's easy from standard Agony Fusion World v. World. Uh, the achievement armor radiant, the glowy parts disappear. So you have the frame of the armor, but nothing in it is hollow. Weird. It's very weird. Very back watching that vid to help fund my legendary. Do it. Seems like it takes years for most of the home instance stuff to be able to, to pay for itself. It does take time for the home instance to pay for itself. But, again, you can use someone else's. I stress this a lot. I enjoyed building mine up. I like doing that. However, you can frequently go, like almost every time I go to Radasuma, I see someone either offering or asking for a full home in the map chat. You can frequently just borrow somebody else's and just do that each day if you don't want to build it. There's always LG home. Yeah. It's, it's uh, not that bad. So basically, I'm encouraging people to do the home instance each day. I'm not encouraging people to build it if they don't want to. I'm just encouraging them to do it. it you know, if that means borrowing someone else's, then so be it. Mm, 
I didn't see there's uh, two new special objectives in the Wizard's Vault. Um... Oh, I'm full. Uh, Winner's Day Tradition Achievements, 250. General Ignatius during Road to Hator, 150. Defeat Tox the Tix's Infinarium, 75. Okay. Oh, I'm full. I need to buy something. Um... Hmm. Hmm. More permanent income, I guess. What's my total income right now? I'm at 137% more gold income. Are the points really full? They're over full. Mystic coin. I'll probably get the Mystic Coins at some point when I run out of other stuff. Maybe get Clovers, but I have a... Hold on, hold on, let me show you. Search account for Mystic. So I got... Over a thousand in the bank. Two thousand five hundred in material storage. Stack on this character. That's it, so... Yeah. So I've got almost four thousand Mystic Coins. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Muck is an odd name. Origin? Uh, TR Spy, there's a YouTube video that was just linked in the chat. That's where I got my name from. Uh, I've told, it's a, it's a solid story, but it takes time to tell, so I've got it in video form. Uh, I did that the first time after Muck released the video, and I already found someone that I could join every day. I just asked the guys that I could uh, do it daily. That's awesome. That's nice. I get a few people that ask me each day, and anytime I'm in the computer, I'm like, yeah, sure. I just let them in, and then I go AFK. Okay. Did you just search across characters? Yeah, it's a function in Blishhood. Uh, there's a thing called item search, and I can search for an item on my account, and it's that fast. It's very quick. So, like, that's my material storage, then it'll show bank, and then here's all my other tunes. I can... Uh, so, if, like, if I misplace something, I can search here um, and find where I left the thing that I misplaced. Like, earlier, I was like, where's my snowflake gobbler? And it's uh, here's the character name that's holding it right now. But yeah, Blishhood's awesome. Blishhood, uh, for anyone who's not familiar with it, it's effectively like a library. Uh, and after you install it, you have 50 different add-ons here. And any of them you can just turn on or off very easily. And so the thing that you just saw me use is called Item Search. It's an add-on in here that lets you scan your account for something you can't find. That's it. That's all it does. So that's Item Search right now. Didn't it bug out and crash after the new build? Nope! Uh, Blishhood is an overlay, technically, not an add-on. It's just something that you look through, and then it's like, uh, imagine a glass window in front of your monitor. You're just looking through it and then seeing the game. Uh, because it's an overlay, it never breaks when new patches come out. Arc DPS pa breaks every single time, because it's plugged into the game. Uh, Blish is an overlay, so it never breaks. Now, it does occasionally need updates and stuff like that, and when that happens, uh, right here, there's just like a button like this, so I just hit update. And says restart blush HUD. I'm like, sure. And that that's it. That's that's it. That's how to update it. It's super easy. It's super easy. Um, but yeah, if anyone's interested in this, I didn't make it, but I love it, so I shout out the product. That's it right there. Um, that is a link to a guide on how to install it and set it up if you want it. And uh, I'm gonna link it in both chats because I see people interested on the other side too. Does it use an API key? Some of the add-ons do. For example, item search. Uh, you use it to look for things that you've misplaced. So yes, it uses an API key with limited permissions to see your account. Uh, it's completely safe. All it does, it's the same as Guild Wars 2 Efficiency's website. It just scans to look for things, uh, to, to look for items. It does not have permission to change any data. It only has permission to see the item data. Quick question, I saw the winter sale started. Do you guys think it's worth it to buy the Steam Elite Jumpstart package? It's at the same price as Unbreakable Gather Tools. Um, the Jumpstart package. Let me see. Hang on. Is that like this? The Guild Wars 2 Jumpstart package? <sighs> 1920 gems. Copper fed salvage obatic is one of the top quality of life items in the game. That is great. And that thing's usually like 600. Shared inventory slot 
It's nice. You could put the copper fed in that slot. Unbreakable gathering tools is not required, but it's very nice to have. It's, it's very simple. You just never have to buy gathering tools ever again. It's a minor convenience, but it's there. Uh, an additional character slot and Royal Terrace Pass. Okay, in my mind, the Royal Terrace Pass, bleh, whatever. That's nothing. Don't care. Um, however, the character slot, if you want another character... Honestly, for me, I just look at the top three. The Copper Fed, the Shared Inventory Slot, and the Unbreakable Gathering Tools. Those alone, I think it's worth 1920. And then the character slot and the Royal Terrace Pass is just a little bit of icing on the cake. So, yeah. If you know that you love the game and you're interested in getting it, I would say this looks worth it to me. And believe me, there's there's some stuff in here that I'd be like, oh god, no, don't. Like this thing, bag slots, okay, that's nice. Uh, 20 slot bag, I mean, you could get that for a few coins off the trading post. XP booster, that's nothing. Dies, that's nothing. However, I would say that this is worth it for the bags. Bag slots are usually 400 gems each, and this is 640, and it gets you two bag slots. The other stuff is just extra. So for this, I, I would say sure, just for the bags. Uh, Arena is thirsty for money on December. There's uh, so much cool fashion in the gym store right now. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Mm. Yeah, definitely a lot of old skins have made a return. The bubble glider. <laughs> now I'm not falling, I'm drowning. Cat ear hood. The thing that always freaked me out about this hood is it gives you someone else's hair. My character's bald. Whose hair is that? Was that on the ground? Or was it just in the hood? Creepy. Why thirsty? It's no pay to play. Nah, I mean, I, I don't think he meant it in a bad way. Uh, G Guild Wars 2 makes money. It, the, the game does not have a recurring monthly cost, and many of their updates are free. So I would say they probably make most of their income from gem store stuff. So I, it's completely okay to me that they have, like, sales of artsy things. It's totally fine. Um, Good morning. I was in the middle of uh, typing that out, not being an add-on is the best part. Yeah. Quick question. Gen 3 Legendary Staff or Longbow? Okay. I... Th uh, this isn't beauty is in the eye of the beholder thing. I don't like Gen 3. It all looks like Ulrein's butt. And I'm just not into that. I... Now, some of them, when you change them to look like, you know, water because of Su Wan, or to look like the fire theme with Primordus, they look kind of cool. But just the baseline Gen 3, I don't really like any of them. So I would pick the Staff or the Longbow based on which one I needed more functionally. Like, wh like uh, do I have two characters that use Staff and only one that uses Longbow? Maybe I should go Staff. That's how my brain works. Orin's but It's true! It's, it's the Scaly set. <laughs> I bet the Noble Ears aren't back. I've been waiting years for that. Uh, I did mention about bringing back old skins in the blog post earlier. Uh, that's a total of 5,700 gems value for 1920. Not bad. Just the best three items are worth 3,900 gems normally. Yeah. Uh, Anet, if you see this, please make a way to turn off other players' gliders. Corey, Anet does not hang out in my chat. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I like that you have that much faith in me, but uh, there's very low chance they're here. And if they are here, then listen to my ideas, not Corey's ideas. I got way better ideas. Oh my gosh. I got a, I got a, a, a ticket about a ranger bug that's uh, about to have its fifth birthday. There's way more classes that consistently use staff with longbow. I take the bow, because, but uh, Bifrost is amazing. Infernal Envoy staff skin in the gem store. You don't need any other staff skin. You, you know what a, a recent set that is very modest that I re really like? The Chained Weapons. The chained weapon set. I really like. Uh, hang on a sec. Like, it's not legendary or anything, but... They're all just a little edgy. That's the sword. It's the hammer. The longbow. Shortbow. Axe. Dagger. 
greatsword, mace, pistol, rifle, scepter, staff, uh, focus, torch, warhorn, and shield. But they've all got like cloth and chains hanging and rattling on them. I, I think they look really cool. Those are from last year. They, yeah, I think they came out last year. Improvised set is fun. Yeah, the improvised set is silly. Everything in that set just looks like it was just duct taped together. So, <laughs> the rifle is just like a pipe tube on a stick. Scepter is a piece of fence with a doll on it. Staff is a lamppost if you want to be Jax. Focus is just a literal clock. Torch is an egg beater with flaming toilet paper stuffed into it. Warhorn is an oil funnel. Shield is a broken chair. Pistol is a faucet <laughs> with a fuse. Mace is like rhubar. Uh, great sword is a bunch of like fused buzzsaw things. Dagger's a broken bottle. Axe is a gear that's broken and tied to a wrench. Shortbow is a saw. Longbow's a fishing pole. Hammer is an anvil on a stick. That's a very strong stick to hold an anvil. And sword is a broken window pane. Muck loves the dangling bits. I love the dangling bits. Axe makes sense, at least, yeah. Those are the, those are the commander's actual weapons. <laughs> uh, I'm making the orange shortbow, but the only reason I'm making it is that I don't care for the unicorn and I have the tigers. Fair. Optimus says, I took a break for the long time. Question about Wizards Vault. Did the first round pass or how long till rewards change? Yes, Optimus. We're in the second round right now. So every, uh, what is it, three months, the Wizards Vault will change and some of the items in the vault will go into legacy rewards. For example, these items were from the first round, as you called it. Now, they're still here. They're just a little bit more expensive now. Um, and now there's uh, new stuff here. So after this one's over, some of these items at the top will get moved to legacy and the price will increase and the new things will appear here. Uh, they're trying to get the Rift War and how we keep missing it. Uh, making the only children of my loves are not expensive on the AH. Axe at least makes sense. The, uh, yeah, the improvised axe. Yeah, the improvised axe actually looks like it would, it would really hurt. The anvil on a stick looks like when you swing the stick, the anvil would just snap off. How can I farm the most profit shards in a short period of time? Hi. Chip's here. Uh, the most profit shards? Profit shards. Wait, hold on a sec. I'm having a brain dump. I read profit and my brain went to spirit shards. Hang on. Oh, the ones from strike missions. Y you just do strike missions. Like the blue and the green and the red ones? Yeah, you just do strike missions. Like, that's that's kind of it. I don't know that there's, like, any broken fast track for profit shards. Oh, no, I hit the wrong thing. No! No! She won't talk to me now. Blue and green now. Yeah. Mace's bricks on a pipe. That would hurt. True. I don't know about the flaming egg beater. Uh, thanks, guess I should pop into the game and do some dailies here and there. Uh, yeah, Optimus, just, just logging in gets you, um, the login reward on here, or is it right here? You get some points just for logging in and clicking on this each day, if you haven't been doing that already. I forget to do that constantly. My chat yells at me, like, Wizards to Vault, Wizards Vault, because I forget about that a lot. Can you die the plush Skyscale mount? Yeah, it has four die channels. Um, but the, but the, but the, but the, but the, but the, die. Let me see. Da -da. And all right, so there's one, two, three, four. So one is that, and one is the that. One is like the horns, and one is the shield thing on the front. Okay. 
All right, chat. Hey, you guys have been awesome. Thank you for a wonderful stream. I need to get some food. I am starving. I am going to step out. Uh, a couple quick plugs on the way out. If you happen to be new to my channel, my name is Muckluck. I stream every single evening and every weekday morning. I'll be back in about five and a half hours for the evening stream if you wish to join me for more Guild Wars 2. Uh, these are my YouTube links. I've got two channels. Would love to share those with you. And a special thank you to the dear patrons. They keep this channel alive with their support, so I thank them every day. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the YouTube stream here, and then I'm going to raid someone else on Twitch, if you hold on just a